different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and bottle siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Oh, by the way, we do shutters too. This is Sports Center. I'm Christine Lisi, Lakers big man Anthony Davis with a left corneal abrasion, questionable against the Hawks tonight. L.A. is percentage points back of ninth place Golden State in the West. Both teams have lost four of seven. Neither will have a lengthy postseason run, predicts ESPN's Jay Williams. I don't know if their teams are properly built to help them go as far, right? Mm -hmm. Think about Steph. Think about, we're always going to talk about the Lakers, LeBron and A.D. But the makeup of those teams, I think, don't compare to the likes of the top end of the Western Conference. Could they win a couple of games in the early playoff or the play-in tournament? Yes, but I don't see them being contenders at all. The Warriors tonight host the Knicks, 930 Eastern ESPN Radio, 10 Eastern on ESPN. NFL, the Cowboys reworked quarterback Dak Prescott's contract going into his final year, and they've slightly reduced his 2024 salary cap hit to $55 million, reports ESPN's Field Yates. Sources tell ESPN's Ed Werder Dallas continues to try to sign Dak to an extension. Baseball, Astros righty Jose Urquidy will start the season on the injured list due to a right forearm strain. He's the fourth Houston starting pitcher to open the season on the I.L. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ, Chris Kennedy, coming up Tuesday. I'll tell you why the struggles of the 2021 draft class should be a warning sign to teams who are looking for a quarterback. It's on Sportsmanlike, 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. And off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR presented by Relief Windows. I'm Matt. Love you, Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. And Mr. Toby Tomlin. All right. We're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there. Make it a great one. Awesome to be back. I was in New York for the Barrett Sports Media Summit. Got to present on YouTube strategy for sports radio. Had an awesome uh, four days away, but fired up to be back. We got a ton to do. The LSU men and women play on. The softball team lost for the first time all season. Jay Johnson met with reporters. NFL free agency in full swing. LSU lands another number one prospect at their position. A ton to do. Let us not waste any more time. It's time to pop the top. On another edition of AFR with Bud Light. Drink easy. I will start with the dud at the dude. LSU drops the SEC opening series to Mississippi State uh, two games to one. And I know up until this point in the season, a lot of the uh, the fan angst has come really at the expense of the LSU offense. And understandably so. Uh, however, pitching and defense were supposed to be the things that were going to carry this team while you figured out the offense. And pitching and defense woefully underperformed and let you down this weekend. So if you're talking offense today, you are missing the mark. Uh, very disappointing weekend for LSU. Uh, losing on Friday 10-4 to where you got handcuffed by a freshman who pitched brilliantly. More on that in a bit. You got up 9-1 to on Saturday and almost blew that entire lead, but held on. And then got down early Sunday, came back and immediately gave that lead right back up and got run ruled in the eighth inning. In all, you allowed 33 runs 
over three games. I don't care what your issues are offensively. If you're giving up an average of 11 runs a game in conference play, you're just not going to beat a lot of people. Now, here's the great news. I got awesome news. LSU is a super jump, had not allowed an earned run throughout the first month of the season. Holman only gave you four and two-thirds, five runs on 10 hits. Jump didn't get out of the fourth inning, allowed four runs. Thatcher Hurd gave you five innings, seven runs on seven hits. The talent is there. That, that's not even debatable. If you go look up MLB.com draft rankings for this upcoming summer's draft, Thatcher Hurd is the 18th ranked prospect, not pitcher, overall. Thatcher Hurd, the 18th ranked prospect. Luke Holman, the 35th ranked prospect. Gage Jump, the 46th ranked prospect. All three of your starters are in the top 46 for the upcoming MLB draft. You have talent. If you're telling me, well, they've been overhyped and they got exposed by an SEC team, I'm not buying that. You got too much talent to be overhyped. What you have is a team that doesn't have a ton of experience. This is the hardest thing, I think, for all of us, me included, to wrap my head around, especially going into this past weekend. You lost seven everyday players from a year ago. The only everyday player from last year's team. That's right. You got experience, but the only everyday player that's back is Tommy White. Yes, Malazzo's played a bunch, and Travinsky's played a bunch, and Jared Jones, and Pearson, and you've got guys that have played. But the only guy whose name was in the lineup every day a year ago is Tommy White. And maybe we didn't put enough emphasis on that. That's why I like going to Houston and playing those games. That's why I like going and playing at Rice, playing at Southeastern. Get away. Make yourself uncomfortable. I thought LSU had done that. But clearly, they went and played in front of 14,000 people who were cheering against them, not for them. And the moment swallowed them up. A couple of things that, that, that I'll get to as far as why some of this went the way it did. But first, I mentioned pitching defense is the other thing. Bingham's in left field on Friday. He overruns, or a ball goes right through his wickets, run scores. Bingham moves to center on Saturday. He's charging a sinking liner, leaves his feet. Bad decision. Run scores. Another runner gets to third, comes in on the next AB on a sack fly. Brady Neal's playing right field for, to my recollection, the first time in his LSU career. Uh, Muse, do you have you have you found found anything? Did he play there at all at any point in his career before this weekend? Not not at LSU, that's for sure. I mean, we played in the midweek, but that was the first time. What about this week in the midweek? Yeah, against okay. North Dakota State. I was he, gone. He played uh, right field. What about in any scrimmages? Never saw him. Saw? In right, never so saw him in right field. Point is, you're on the road in the first SEC weekend, and you throw Brady Neal out there in right field. That feels like a knee jerk panic reaction. To what happened this weekend? If defense, if pitching and defense is supposed to lead you, then you need <laughs> your pitching and your best defensive lineup. Um, and this is boy, this is going to cause a lot of you to go crazy. Um, but we got to talk about Paxton Kling because Paxton Kling has to be in the lineup every single day, and you saw why this weekend. And I get it. And this is a conversation which becomes argumentative that I've had with you over the past several years, because it always seems to come up surrounding someone. And I always give you the same examples. In 2009, Austin Nola was a freshman. He gave you nothing offensively, but he was a great defensive shortstop, and that's one of the reasons they won the national championship. In 2015, Andrew Stevenson hit a buck 80, but he was in center field every day because it was basically having two guys in center field. Talked about Alex Malazzo a couple of years ago, and boy, a lot of y'all love to crap on me for that one, but it's clear he is your best defensive catcher. You can sacrifice a bat for an elite glove at a premium defensive position. Center field is a premium defensive position. Paxton Kling is an elite glove. The play that I was talking about on Saturday, the liner to center, where Bingham left his feet, didn't get it. I talked to a scout afterwards who has access to all the track mandate, all that stuff. So that would have been a 98% catch probability for Paxton Kling. Let me say that again. Not, not my opinion. Someone who gets paid to scout prospects for a Major League Baseball team 
told me that was a 98% catch probability for Paxton Kling on Saturday. For Mac Bingham, left his feet, missed the ball, run scored, another run went to third. Now, you end up winning that game, but that could have cost you. Paxton Kling ha- bat him ninth, tell him never to take the bat off his shoulder, maybe he walks out, I don't care. Got to be in the lineup every day because I need him in center field. He is that good defensively in center field. Couple of other things. Uh, how about one pot? Hat tip to Tommy White, who was great this weekend. Hit 385, three homers, seven RBI, at a 500 on base percentage. And he was great defensively as well. How about the ground ball, the, um, a double play at third base where he stepped on the back, fired across the diamond? Tommy White was awesome this weekend. He was the only guy who looked like the moment wasn't too big for him. He's your only veteran guy, veteran returner. Um, that was great to see. A few things about maybe why it went the way it did. Number one, you've got to credit Mississippi State. They played great baseball this weekend in every phase. I I mean, from I I believe firmly there's urgency from this Mississippi State coaching staff because they know. They missed the postseason the last two years. All of the equity they built up from winning the Natty in 21 is gone. You missed the postseason again this year, they're out. So there's urgency. They've done a good job of recruiting. They've got a talented roster. And they were ready for that moment. Hat tip. Sometimes the other team just plays better than you. And that was certainly the case this weekend. They had a great plan against Luke Holman. They said, we are not not swinging at your breaking ball. If you snap off breaking balls and throw them for strikes, we'll go have a seat in the dugout. But you throw us a fastball, we're going to swing and we're not going to miss it. And they didn't. That's why they, they touched them up for 10 hits. Great approach. Now LSU needs to adjust. Nolan Stevens, the freshman who threw on Friday. Tip your cap. That dude was incredible. His long outing of the season was two and two-thirds against Jackson State. He dominated LSU's line for five innings. Didn't allow a hit until the ninth. He was awesome. Like, just tip your cap, go on to the next day. And, and the next day, LSU started on fire against Cal Steven. LSU had a great approach to start the game on Saturday. Uh, Sunday, after LSU came back to tie it, Dakota Jordan hit a bomb to center field which was incredible. It was not a bad pitch by Thatcher Hurd. I went onto Twitter and watched that home run 20 times after that. Hurd threw a breaking ball, and Dakota Jordan took that thing from six inches off the ground and hit it 416 to center. He's like Gary Sheffield with his bat speed. All all that power generated by Dakota Jordan. It ain't like he turned around a 95-mile-an-hour fastball. Like, sometimes they're good, and they were this weekend. So you can tip your cap to state. I mentioned that you know, LSU, I think, needs to grow up in a hurry. Uh, you got a lot of dudes who have played, but not dudes that have been counted on the way they are now. Well, guess what? Three games in, you got humbled a bit. Time to grow up, and you better do it in a hurry. Because this week you got Florida, then you're at Arkansas, you're home against Vandy, and then you're at Tennessee. If you don't get it together in this first half of the season, I mean, you could be at the halfway point, look up and go, Damn, we're five and ten, six and nine in the league. Like, wh- you got a manageable schedule in the second half, but how much work do you have to do to get yourself into the contention of hosting and all that conversation? So, listen, I'm not overreacting. It's three games, and the great thing about baseball is they all count the same. It doesn't matter if you get run ruled fifteen to five or if you win two to one; they all count the same in the standings. So, look, you went on the road and you lost a road series. It sucks. Improve this week come home, play up to your ability, have a great crowd behind you, and go win a series against Florida, turn this thing around, go on the road to Arkansas and see how you fare. Got a long way to go. I'm not going to tell you need to overreact, but there's a lot to learn from this past weekend with LSU dropping that series to Mississippi State. All right, it's After Further Review. We're glad you're with us. Our show open every day is brought to you by Bud Light. Drink easy in Louisiana with the great taste of Bud Light. Of course, the official beer of the LSU Tigers, the official beer of the champs, your defending champ baseball team, the champion uh, women's basketball team, which their road back to the Final Four begins this week as well. Make sure you got plenty of ice-cold Bud Light and our friends over at Mockler Beverage. Love being partnered with them. They've been a great local community partner for four decades, and every chance I get to tell you about Mockler Beverage and our friends over at Bud Light, I'm happy to do it. So whether you're at home watching the game, if you're at the PMAC, at the box, or wherever you may be, make sure you got plenty of ice-cold Bud Light. Drink easy with the champs with Bud Light. All right, it's after further review. We'll knock out our first break of the show. We'll come back. Great to be back. Thanks for being with us here. When we come back, 
Uh, we'll talk about a big, literally and figuratively, uh, player, a free agent, visiting the Saints in New Orleans today. That's next on AFR. AFR. Man, just when you think spring is here and summer's around the bend, it's going to be in the 30s tonight. <laughs> Muse is so ticked. Anyway, uh, I am too. I, I thought I'd put the sweaters away for the rest of the season. But if you've got issues with your home central heater or your AC, you can call River City's One Hour Air. Remember, they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. Give them a buzz. 752-0001. 752-0001. Tell you, you drive around town, you see all the yellow vans and trucks. Like I was literally at, uh, at Airline and Highland yesterday just across the intersection from me. Uh, was making a left turn, was a River City's one-hour air truck. You can't miss them. They're, I mean, they're everywhere. Their fleet is all over town because your friends and neighbors do what I do. Trust River City's one-hour air. Remember, it's time for your preseason AC tune-up. Get that AC running efficiently for the coming warm weather. River City's one-hour air can help. Mention the Moscona special. They'll save you 25 bucks off system repairs. River City's one-hour air. Bayou Ford has 7,500 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. 7,500 off plus 1.9% financing for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart... After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Door Sighting. Oh, yeah, they also do interior shutters. Glad to be back. Muse, thanks for holding things down last week. I'm glad you didn't set the thing on fire. Yeah, man, nothing broke. Everything we were good. looks okay. Yeah, Wait, think, do you mean nothing good. broke while I was gone? Something had to have broken while I was gone. It's just the nature of this bit. I mean, no, actually, we got things fixed, like those screens behind you. Are oh, you yeah, gone? that was broken. Yeah, now One it's back. You're back. It's out. working. It's good. How about that? That's really yeah. good. Uh, is it weird being back over there now? A little bit. Yeah. 
Yeah. The view's just different. The view's different. Yeah, it is a little different over there. You don't have the bright light shining on you. Nope. Like that, that bright light right there. Those yeah. things get a little hot, too, sometimes. Yeah, you got to watch out. Hey, you know, when you always talk about being freezing in here, and I say, I'm never cold. Maybe it's the that lights. It could be. Could that be could be. It could be the lights. It's cold in here, here today. Yeah. I, I'm good. I'm actually, I'm actually uh, perspiring a little bit. All right. You know, body temps elevating. There you go. Maybe it was the weekend. Uh, I got me a little uh, flustered with what happened with the baseball team this weekend. Anyway. All right. Well, thanks for filling in last week. Yeah, man. Glad to have, uh, glad to be back. I would say if I, uh, the day, the day I ever leave and I'm not excited to come back is when I know I'll be done doing this job. But man, today I just like butterflies, just fired up, like let me up. I was ready. I'm like, let's go. I'm fired up to be back. Okay. Um, one of the things I missed while I was out, of course, was a lot of uh, free agent talk. Uh, and we'll get to that uh, a bit later in the show. Uh, Mark Zeno is going to be here in an hour. Uh, he's in Atlanta. We'll do some NFC South talk. And I do want to kind of run through a lot of what happened last week just to give you sort of some bullet point takes on that. But um, uh, Monday is a big day for the Saints in free agency. Uh, Nick Underhill earlier in the day tweeted that Chase Young's visit with the Saints is happening today. Um, he, he notes uh, the pass rusher had a reschedule last week, but is at the facility today, Monday. So this was scheduled for Friday for uh, some reason, which I have not seen reported yet, um, that was uh, canceled Friday or postponed, I should say. And then Chase Young arrived at the Saints facility uh, Monday afternoon and is going on his visit. This feels uh, eerily similar to the Jadevian Clowney courtship a couple of years ago, if you remember that, where... Um, Clowney, of course, a former number one overall pick, freakish edge rusher. The Saints courted him as they were in need of pass rushing help, and it looked like they might get a deal done, and it kind of fell apart, and Clowney ended up um, going the way of Seattle and then Tennessee, as we all know kind of how his path has gone. But anyway, um, very plainly, should the Saints sign Chase Young? Absolutely. Absolutely, without hesitation, Chase Young is in New Orleans today at the Saints facility. Don't let him leave. That's always the old thing, right? If a, if a player goes on a visit as a free agent, don't let him out the building. Because if they get out the building, that's generally a good sign that they're not going to sign with you. So don't let him leave. Lock the doors. Force a pen in his hand. Get some Marie Laveau voodoo, put a spell on him, don't let him leave. I love the idea of signing Chase Young. He's 24 years old. He's almost 25. The former number two overall pick. We remember him at Ohio State. He was a total freak show. Same draft as Joe Burrow. Burrow went one, Chase Young went two. But in four years, he's only played in 43 games. He had a really solid rookie year. 15 games played, had seven and a half sacks, 10 TFLs. Really good rookie year. And then the injuries hit. And he played sparingly his next two seasons. And then last year, he split the year, right? He started the season in Washington. They traded him to San Francisco where he finished the season. And last year in 2023, he played in 16 games with seven and a half sacks and seven TFL. So basically his rookie year and last year were almost mirror images of each other. When he plays, he's a really productive guy. He just battled injuries for the two years in between. So if he's healthy, if you sign Chase Young and you get a healthy version of the this predator, he's a more productive defensive end than anybody you have. With respect to Cam Jordan, who in my opinion will be a pro football Hall of Famer one day, Cam Jordan is at the end of his career. He had two sacks a season ago. He is no longer the ferocious presence off the end that he was. That's unfortunate. I think he can still be a very good player. And certainly Cam has been very good against the run in his career. But as far as an elite edge rusher, that's not Cam Jordan anymore. Carl Granderson... His career, he had a career year this past season. Uh, Carl Granderson had eight and a half sacks. But the prior four years, a total of 14 and a half sacks, which isn't shabby. It's just a guy who's a rotational player who's going to give you eh, three, four sacks over the course of a season. But this past year, Granderson gave you eight and a half. 
Tano Passigno has a, his career high is four sacks. You got nothing out of Isaiah Foskey a year ago, literally zero sacks. So if you're looking for an edge rusher to pressure the quarterback and get you sacks, by the way, the Saints a year ago were 28th in the NFL in sacks. They just didn't pressure the quarterback. Now you're going to tell me you have a guy that, when he's been healthy and playing, has given you seven and a half sacks. Yes. Yes, I want that guy. Especially if you're going to get him on a one-year prove-it deal, which is essentially what Chase Young is going to be in the market for. There's only three teams that have really shown interest. It's Carolina, Tennessee, and New Orleans. That's a soft market for Chase Young. So he's going to be in a spot where he's going to sign a one-year incentive-laden prove-it deal, and if he shows he can stay healthy and produce, then someone next year is going to pay him. And maybe that'll be New Orleans. I, I hope it is New Orleans. It means he has a great year this year and wants to stay, and he's really productive. If you're wor 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 wondering about the money, Saints have the cap space, especially for a, a one-year prove-it type deal. Uh, the Saints currently have $16.6 million in available cap space. I'm looking at Spotrack right now. Um, it, Paul, if you want to pull this up, you can. Uh, it's Right now, the estimated cap space is at $16.69 million. So that's the estimated cap space. Now, keep in mind, this does not account for the new contracts, which we don't know exactly all the terms and the specifications of how the free agent deals with um, uh, with the free agents they've agreed to are going to work out. Uh, Willie Gay, uh, Stanley Morgan, Nathan Peterman, Cedric Wilson. So we'll see how all of that, all those deals we know some of the terms, but we don't know how they're going to be structured, so we'll see how that goes. And remember, you also have to sign your draft picks, and the uh, projected draft pool for the Saints is $10.5 million for the, the draft picks that they have and a, a cap hit, a top 51 cap hit, of, of just over $5 million. So you got to save money to sign your draft picks as well. you got to save money to sign your draft picks, but they got money. Like, they, they can make it work to sign Chase Young. So... Money's not an issue. It really comes down to, do you love the player? Which, given the options that you have, the realistic options you have of signing a defensive end, you're talking about a guy that's the former number two overall pick that physically has the ability. He's only 24 years old and has played in just 43 games. So a lot of treads still on the tire for a young player if you can keep him healthy over the course of a season. And you have a motivated Chase Young as well because he's going to be playing in a prove-it year for a big contract. All of those, like, you just get your pen out, you got your box and your checklist, and you're going, young, yep. Tread on the tire, yep. Motivated, yep. I mean, all those things are there. The only thing I look at and go, well, I don't know, is does Chase Young want to play in New Orleans? Like, that's the big question. Does Chase Young want to play in New Orleans? Or would you rather go to a winning team? Well, look at the teams that have courted him. It's Carolina, the worst team in the league. It's Tennessee, which is going through, certainly through a, a transition period in their franchise, and New Orleans. And of the three I just mentioned, the best defensive situation is the Saints. As much as I don't like head coach Dennis Allen, defensive coordinator Dennis Allen Deserves our praise. He's been a great defensive coordinator in the NFL. And the Saints last year were near the bottom of the league in sacks. They were 28th in the NFL in sacks. Dead last, by the way, was Carolina. Now, you could argue with Carolina trading Brian Burns to New York, they're desperately in need of a pass rush. And so maybe there's more of an open door for Chase Young, whereas you do have Cam and Granderson, and you have bodies there right now in New Orleans. But... That's the only thing I can think of. It's a great spot for Chase Young. One year, prove it deal, defensive-minded head coach. Had, you have Cam Jordan there, one of the best in the NFL uh, in his era to learn from. I, this makes too much sense for me. Like, put the padlock on the door at the Saints facility and do not let him leave without signing a contract. 
Jace Young visiting the Saints today. Hopefully, they get that deal done. All right, it's after further review. We're glad to have you aboard with us. We're brought to you by Michelle Weighing and Measurement. Michelle.com, Michelle.com. I tell you all the time to check out their LinkedIn over at Michelle because they do an awesome job over uh, with their LinkedIn of posting content, a lot about what they are. Um, you know, if you're ever interested in the types of things that Michelle does and the services that they offer, always recommend you go check them out over at their LinkedIn page. They got a great post today about, you know, what exactly um, uh, affects scale accuracy. So you can certainly educate yourself with their blog and you can learn more about all the different things they do. Yes, at Michelle Weighing and Measurement, they're our nation's largest distributor of scales, but They'll also service all of your precision measurement devices. You need devices calibrated. They can do that. They offer ISO 17025 accreditation. Uh, their track system makes it so easy for you because it's it's an acronym for track records, assets, and calibrations. So it's basically if you ever get audited, hypothetically, you know exactly when your device was calibrated, where it was calibrated, who the technician was, and it's free 24-7, 365 access to all that info. It's Michelle Weighing and Measurement. Check them out at michelle.com. That's michelle.com. All right, y'all. Um, glad to have you here. Uh, in 30 minutes, I'll get to the big news from the LSU football weekend, which is another number one prospect in the country at his position is committed to LSU over the weekend. We'll get to that in 30 minutes right at the top of hour number two. By the way, uh, LSU football back on the practice field Tuesday morning. No media availability. They'll practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, right? Did I get it right? Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday? So Tuesday, no media availability. Wednesday, there is media availability. And then Saturday as well. So we'll hear from Brian Kelly on Wednesday as LSU continues to make its way through spring ball. They're coming off of spring break now. So when we have updates, we'll certainly pass them along to you. All right, it's after further review. We'll knock out a break. We'll go around the SEC. Stick around. AFR. Brought to you by Darren James and Associates, brokered by LPT Realty. Every home, listed by every company, all in one place. You know where to find it, agent225.com, agent225.com. Man, I was so fired up to talk to my guy, Darren James. And, you know, they've uh, seen tremendous growth with LPT Realty from one to 9,700 agents in just one year. And, man, I love sharing all these great testimonials. Uh, Roy Henry, who you heard from a while back, listens to the show, sent this text to Darren. He said, Darren, we're about to close. I want to say how totally pleased we were with your services. No doubt we have the best agent in the business. We brag on you constantly. Would recommend you to any that would listen. Use me as a reference or to endorse you in any way. Tell Moscona to use me on his show. I uh, spoke to your dad today. We shared a hearty laugh. Thanks again and God bless. Another, another raving fan for Darren James and Associates, brokered by LPT Realty. Agent225.com. Think real estate, think Darren James. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. It's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. 
Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy-duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Door Siding. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. And what a day for the Southeastern Conference on Selection Sunday. Candidly, um, I, I'm looking forward to the day where Selection Sunday matters t- to me again as an LSU fan. Um, it's way more fun when you have the anticipation of watching the names pop up on the screen and to know that your team is going to be called and you're finding out where it's going to be. I didn't even watch yesterday. Uh, Muse, did you watch Selection Sunday? Nope. No, Pauly, did you watch Selection Sunday? I did not. This is my point. Like, we work at a sports station, and there wasn't even enough interest from the three of us for any of the three of us to watch. Now, some of you, if you're a a basketball diehard or you were just waiting to see so you fill out your bracket, like, there's that component of it. But when you know your team isn't participating – a lot of the luster and the excitement for Selection Sunday isn't there. Like, the the 13 straight years that Dale Brown made the tournament, that's what I long for again as an LSU fan. When you know your name is going to be called, it's just a matter of where you go and who you play in. Um, but for the SEC, it, it was a great day. Uh, eight SEC teams earned NCAA tournament bids. That was the most in the country, tied for the most of all conferences. And, by the way, when you include the two teams in the NIT, 10 bids to postseason. That's that's a record for the SEC. Uh, so, Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, Tennessee's a two seed, Kentucky a three, Bama and Auburn each earned a four seed, South Carolina a six, Florida a seven, uh, Mississippi State an eight seed, and Texas A&M earned a nine seed. So, Eight SEC teams earning bids uh, to the big dance. And I, every time, when I saw this yesterday, my first thought, like my first thought was 2013. And 2013 was the year where SEC basketball bottomed out and the league sort of collectively made a decision that they had to get better. Uh, in 2013, the SEC was a three-bid league, which is embarrassing when you think about the resources that the Southeastern Conference has. But what had happened in the conference is the league made a whole bunch of terrible hires. And as a result, you you saw what transpired. You ended up with a, th- with a, th- a three-bid league. And subsequent, you started to see the league invest in hiring basketball coaches. You know, when Ben Howland was hired at Mississippi State, when Tom Crean was hired at Georgia. Like, that was the sort of hire you started to see. Coaches that had been to Final Fours before. Rick Barnes got hired at Tennessee. The league made, ultimately, Bruce Pearl at Alabama, at Auburn. The league made, Buzz Williams at, at A&M. The league made an investment in saying, we're going to commit to hiring proven successful basketball coaches. In 2016, the league hired Mike Trangisi, the former Big East commissioner, to say, how do we fix this? And a lot of it was hiring coaches. A lot of it was scheduling in the non-conference. And look at what it's yielded now. 
you've got a strong, strong to quite strong. Uh, I'd say, would you say strong to quite strong basketball league? Strong to quite strong, yes. Strong to quite strong. I mean, how's your portfolio? It's strong Strong to quite strong. Quite strong basketball league. That's a Meet the Parents reference. Muse, if, if you ever drop a Meet the Parents, there's a handful of movies. You ever drop a reference from one of those movies, you'll get a, a chuckle out of Muse, no doubt. Uh, and he got it. I knew he got looked over there to see if he was going to get it. Boy, grinning over there, ear to ear. Um, and and so anyway, here here you are a, a decade removed from that three-bid league, from being a three-bid league, and now you've, you've got the most in, in the country. It didn't happen overnight, but um, but exciting. Hopefully next year we're talking about LSU. Uh, in in the NCA tournament as well. Real quick, brought to you by Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. Tell you every day, do business with someone you know. Hudco Roofing and HudcoRoofing.com. Um, awful weather on Sunday, storming weather on Sunday, and um, my goodness, if you had roof leaks and our phones have been ringing, give us a shout at Hudco. HudcoRoofing.com. Tell you every day, do business with someone you know. That's us. It's me and Tilly and Terrio and Joe Morales and the whole gang. Do business with someone you know. Give us a shout. 364-1007, 364-1007 in the 225. It's 364-1007, or you can go to hudcoroofing.com. It lets you know, get your uh, free, no obligation roofing inspection. It, maybe it's something as small as a residential repair. I, I know there's large commercial buildings, got roof leaks. We can help you out there as well. I tell you all the time about our, um, our the TPO, the, um, um, the, the, the roof replacement for, for flat roofs as well. It's a silicone coating product that roughly half the cost of a roof replacement. It comes with a 20-year warranty. Do business with someone you know. Hudco Roofing and HudcoRoofing.com. 364-1007. Give us a call on the 225. 364-1007. Um, real quick while I got a minute. While I was at Muse, did y'all, while I was at, did y'all talk about the, on Friday, about the new college football playoff deal? Yes. Um, what's been the, the general reaction to this? Uh, again, while I was in New York, I didn't, I didn't pay a lick of attention to sports. I was in that conference every day from 9 to 5, basically, 8.30 to, to 5, basically. And then Erica came with me. So as soon as I was done with the conference, we went out, went to dinner, went to a Broadway show. So, like, I mean, z- zero. Watched zero sports while I was out. So what was the reaction on Friday to this? It really it felt like nobody was really surprised because, I mean, everything was kind of leaking out. Like, I mean, we had Ross on the week before talking about the revenue split and whatnot. Yeah. Uh so, I mean, I think everybody kind of saw it coming, but it definitely seems like the other leagues tried their best to protect themselves against the Big Ten and the SEC in the future, but I don't really know if they actually accomplished that. Well, with they their, have no leverage. Yeah, I mean, so it's like you, you saw the part with like the look-in. They have like the look-in thing. Yeah, and, and that's a good idea. It, it, it essentially allows an opportunity to evaluate the contract a yeah. couple of years in because there's also always the possibility you could have more realignment. So you, you would have to have protections for potential changes. But I, I, the most important thing here is, too, number one, you've got two years locked in. So 2024, 2025, you got a 12-team playoff. We know that. In 2026, they could move to 14 teams. That's not finalized, but that is what's expected, that they'll move to 14 teams. We don't know how they will choose the 14 teams yet. That's not agreed upon. Um but the most significant part of this is the revenue. I mean, they got the revenue figured out for the format. Goes to show you where their priorities lie. But the biggest deal is so like all the Power Five under the current deal, every team in the Power Five got five point roughly five and a half million dollars. The SEC and the Big Ten are going from five and a half to twenty one million. The ACC is bumping to thirteen million. The Big 12 is going to 12 million. Notre Dame will get 12 million. The G5 is basically standing pat. They're at 1 5. They're going to 1 8. Who gets screwed here is Washington State and Oregon State because they're going to get 360K. They were getting about $6 million as part of the Pac 12. They're plummeting down to 360K. They got to join a league. So, however, they do it somehow, some way, they got to join a conference. Like they, they can't remain independent and be self sufficient. They're they're just they're not big enough brands to be to remain self sufficient. So but what's happened essentially is the SEC and the Big Ten, their revenue went way, 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 way up. And like the SEC and the Big Ten were already ahead of everybody. They went whoa, 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 way up. And the Big Twelve and the ACC kind of went up a little bit, but not nearly where the SEC and the Big Ten are. And then everybody else like at the bottom. We're it's we're heading toward the inevitability, which we've talked about forever. It's just going to be a one College football 
You're not going to have leagues. You're not going to have these independently bartered deals as far as conferences like you're just going to have an invite only or pay your fee to be in. If you pay it, you're in. If you can't, you're not. It's it's where we're headed. It's what I've said for a decade, and you're you're seeing it manifest, and it's going to be awesome for college football. Where like I know this is so hard for people to believe, but you latch on to history. You don't want change. You, you're resistant to change. But we're going to get great games. We're going to get a real postseason. You're going to get a regular season that is filled with games you want to see every Saturday instead of a quarter of the schedule filled with hot garbage like LSU against Grambling where the Tigers score 70. Nobody wants to see it. Give me games I want to see. And you're going to get a schedule full of that moving forward. I can't wait for it. Okay. It's after further review. Monday shows are brought to you by Relief Windows. Windows door siding. Oh, yeah, we do indoor shutters as well. Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. All right, let me knock out a break. We'll come back. We'll wrap up our number one next. It's great to be here. Stick around. It's AFR. AFR. And before I was wheeled, wheels up to New York last week, had a great meeting a week ago over at Action Industries with my guy Chuck and the team over there. Man, they do awesome work. And they've been around for 42 years. And one of the things that I really want to stress is I've started to tell you about Action Industries and you've become familiar with the name and talk about the mound visits at Alec Box Stadium and how they're an official partner of LSU Athletics. At Action Industries, their fabrication shop services are one of the things that really set them apart. It's pipe, structural steel, pressure vessels. Not everyone fabricates pressure vessels, but they do it at Action. Also, when you're talking about their pipe fabrication, they fabricate in separate shops, alloy and carbon steel. The two sections are segregated. You understand why that's important. They're ASME certified vessel manufacturer, and they have all three stamps as well. Again, if you know what that means, you know why it's important, and Action Industries does it. Look them up online. It's Action Industries. It was a human day. Barefoot children play. Looking for its summer shade. Like cyber stumps, your fruits are planted deep inside of me. Oh, I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation.
after further review, presented by Relief Windows. Windows, doors, siding. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. Man, it was a really good, um, really, really good uh, time over the Barrett Sports Media Summit. If you're not familiar, uh, Jason Barrett is um, a longtime radio PD who has a consulting business now, and it's the summit where people from all over the country come in, and that's where I was last week in New York, and um, it was really cool. Uh, the uh, on the first day, um, let's see, Paul Heyman from the Do you know? Are you a wrestling guy, are you Paul? Are you do you know who Paul Heyman is? I'm very familiar with Paul Heyman. Yes. So I had no idea who Paul Heyman was. Full disclosure, Paul. Do you know who Paul Heyman is? I don't know the name, but the picture you pull up, I recognize the face. Okay. Well, he was there. Um, I again knew, didn't know anything about him. I like I watched wrestling as a kid, and probably stopped watching wrestling around like ninety. 495 ish you know it was still like hulkamania yellow Running tights wild. and all that sort of stuff eat your vitamins say your prayers yeah, that 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 A after that no clue so i didn't know any idea who paul Heyman was um but he was there Stephen a was there well they asked me and phil Mackey, who um i should i shouldn't say does radio it, he, he's a media guy from the uh, twin cities of minneapolis they asked me and Phil to present on YouTube strategy, YouTube strategy, making YouTube work for sports radio. Uh, we've done a lot, obviously, with our YouTube here, not just our live stream, but also, you know, our clips channels and everything we post. It's And it was so, uh, it was interesting. Um, this, uh, at Barrett Sports Media posted, uh, Stephen A. and Paul Heyman were the 2024 BSM Summit headliners, but Phil Mackey and Matt Moscona's YouTube presentation stole the show, was the tweet. And it's, it, it's not... It's not dishonest. I mean, it, it was a little, it was a little stunning um, to be in a room uh, like uh, of that caliber, the amount of people that were there that didn't really have a, a YouTube strategy. Um, but we've done a lot with video you know, over the years and done really well. It was great to be there uh, at 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 the Barrett Summit and uh, to be able to share and learn a lot as well. So we'll be able to Im implement a lot of of uh, what it took from there as well. So really cool, man. It was a great time, and uh, appreciate Jason Barrett for the invite to be there and. And amused for holding it down here while while I was uh, while I was out. So, um, so if you're on YouTube watching us live, please smash the like button and subscribe up to the channel. We appreciate you. Um, real quick, as we wrap up hour number one, and uh, I'll get in about ten minutes from right now. I'll get to got another gigantic commit for LSU football. Another number one prospect at his position for 2025 is aboard in this class. Now, I'll get to that in about ten minutes. Um, it's very quickly, this is kind of a one-off. I saw this headline, and it this is sort of a, a cut-and-paste headline from almost any major American city with professional sports teams. It just happens to be in Kansas City right now. Uh, Chiefs might explore option of leaving Kansas City if upcoming sales tax, vo tax vote doesn't go their way. Um, again, I don't think anybody really here cares deeply if the Chiefs stay in Kansas City or not, but I found this interesting, and it's not just a one-off headline. This, this is... Um, a, you'll hear uh, Mark Donovan, who is the president of the Kansas City Chiefs, doing an interview on KSHB 41 in Kansas City. And here's what he said when talked when asked about the possibility of the Chiefs leaving. Could the Royals leave Kansas City, Missouri? I can't answer that for the Royals. I just know that for us, the Chiefs, we would have to look at all of our options. Do those options include leaving Kansas City, Missouri? I think they would have to include leaving Kansas City, but our goal here is that we want to stay here. And we're willing to deal which is actually better for the county to stay so first of all i don't believe for a millisecond that the kansas city chiefs are going to leave kansas city it's worth mentioning the browns did leave cleveland the colts did leave baltimore i mean we the the, the raiders left oakland i mean they left oakland went to los angeles and then back to oakland and then now in las vegas so teams do leave franchises that you thought would never leave leave and it it happens Sometimes tradition-rich franchises can't come to agreements with cities or have better opportunities than other places. So uh, you never say never, but obviously with the success the Chiefs have had, I mean, in this in this last decade, it's it's unrivaled in the NFL, and they're going to figure it out. But they have a plan for an $800 million renovation at Arrowhead. The Chiefs say they'll pay $300 million of it. The rest of it they want the city, county uh, to pay for through a uh, a three-eighths of a cent sales tax that's been in play and they need it to be um, 
uh, approved through 2031 if they do the, the chief say they'll sign a 25-year lease at Arrowhead. But without that, they're not signing a lease. The bottom line is this. There's nothing in the Kansas City economy or any state's economy, I shouldn't speak in absolutes, but in almost any state's economy that's going to positively affect their city or state's economy like a professional sports franchise. There's just nothing that brings the type of attention and unpaid media to a city, state, region like a professional sports franchise. It's why cities want them all the time. But so many population bases and local officials don't look at it through a business lens. They look at it through a sports entertainment lens. If you looked at it in the same way that Louisiana became Hollywood South by giving tax credits to movie makers, it's how you drove so much industry here. Look at it the same way. And ultimately, they will, and they do. And they'll figure it out in Kansas City. If they don't, we'll take you down here. Come on down. Not the, not the Chiefs, but Royals, come on down. Let's do it. Hour two next. AFR. We're brought to you by South Point Volkswagen, SouthPointVW.com. New and certified pre-owned in Baton Rouge and online at SouthPointVW.com. Y'all, uh, the rest of this month, I told you before I left, you got about 12 more days to go, two weeks or so. 0% APR. 0% APR for 60 months on Tiguan. You want a brand new Tiguan that's a compact SUV? 0%. For 60 months. That's five years. 0% for five years right now at South Point Volkswagen. They're celebrating 75 years, VW is. Making amazing, high-quality, great German-engineered vehicles. And now, of course, with their Chattanooga, Tennessee plant, manufactured right here in the U.S. of A. So you're supporting American jobs as well, while getting the great German engineering, the style, the feel, the performance of luxury, the safety features without the the cost. South Point Volkswagen, what's your direction? Power up your next project with John Deere deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SEA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques, Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana the local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. 
At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Christine Lisi, the Lakers trying to remain in postseason contention, maybe without power forward Anthony Davis tonight versus the Hawks. He's listed as questionable with a left corneal abrasion. L.A.'s dropped four of five, and its defense is a big reason why. Believes first take host Stephen A. Smith. LeBron, like you said, lights out doing all that he could do, but I'm looking at the, the, the Lakers defensively. You can't stop anybody. And it's mainly because D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves, who's improved over the last few weeks, but both of them together defensively, they're not worried. They have no yeah. one worried. No one. LA's holding on to the final play in spot in the West, percentage points back of ninth place Golden State. NFL ESPN's Field Yates reports the Cowboys reworked the contract of quarterback Dak Prescott going into the final year of his deal, reducing his 2024 salary cap hit by $4 million to $55 million. ESPN's Ed Werder reports Cowboys continue to try to sign Dak to an extension. Linebacker Leighton Van Der Esch retiring after dealing with recurring neck issues in his six-year NFL career. The 28-year-old was released by the Cowboys on Friday. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ, Chris Cannon, coming up Tuesday. I'll tell you why the struggles of the 2021 draft class should be a warning sign to teams who are looking for a quarterback. It's on Sportsmanlike, 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Hour two, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us, AFR. Presented by Relief Windows. I'm Matt. This is Shaq O'Neal, and I hate that. All O'Neal. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Mm, you sir. And Mr. Toby Tom Blake. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Mark Zeno in about 15 minutes. Talk some NFC South. How it's all come through free agency. David DeLucci talking some SEC baseball one hour from right now. And a Matt McMahon will be with us in hour three. The LSU men's basketball coach will be here uh, at the bottom of hour number three. Um, we'll, uh, we'll talk about his team punching their ticket to the NIT. They'll host North Texas on Tuesday at the Maravich Center. So Matt McMahon will be here in about 90 minutes from right now. Breaking news uh, here as we kick off hour number two. Love a newsy day. Love when there's breaking news. And I'm so glad we talked about Chase Young 45 minutes ago. <laughs> I could have just waited 45 minutes and see this for the top hour, too. Uh, Ian Rappaport reporting. Uh, the New Orleans Saints are signing free agent defensive end Chase Young. Uh, visited the Saints today. They got a deal done, and I'm thrilled about it. If you missed uh, my thoughts on Chase Young about 45 minutes ago, we talked about it. You can catch that on demand, of course, AFR On Demand presented by Brett Golf. Catch it on the After Further Review Saints YouTube channel or however you get your uh, podcast, just search After Further Review. You can go get my full thoughts on it. But I love it. You got a guy who's 24 years old who, at his when he's been healthy, has been a, a very productive NFL edge rusher. The Saints certainly needed help at this spot. Uh, this almost certainly means you will not be using the 14th overall pick on a on an edge rusher, a guy that was physically gifted enough to be the number two overall pick, one pick behind Joe Burrow. It's just injuries slowed the start of his career uh, in Washington. And he's going to be on a one-year prove-it deal. So I love it. I absolutely love this move by New Orleans. Uh, we'll see. We don't know the terms of the deal yet, but I'm, I'm assuming this is going to be just a, a prove-it deal. And get him, get him motivated, Chase Young, for a year to stay healthy, 
try to get to a next big contract and um, could be the, to, to the Saints' benefit. So we'll talk about uh, that plenty in the coming days and weeks. But the Saints, according to Ian Rappaport, have gotten a deal done with uh, Chase Young, a new weapon there off the edge for New Orleans. All right, it's after further review. Monday show is presented by Relief Windows. So I'm home on Sunday and uh, doing more in scone, and someone jumps in the comments and say, hey, Ellis, you just got another commitment. And my goodness, this is just so much fun and almost uncanny, the, ro- the role that LSU is on recruiting right now. On Sunday, the LSU Tigers got a commitment from the number one interior offensive line prospect in the country for 2025, Tyler Miller. Uh, Tyler Miller is, just to give you the, the, the little bit of a thumbnail backstory on him, he's 6'6", six, six, uh, 318 pounds, He's out of this. He's out of um, out of Laurel, Mississippi, and picked LSU over Ole Miss and Mississippi State. You're talking about a guy who is the according to on three the number one interior offensive line prospect in the country for 2025, and the number 32 overall prospect in the country for 2025 per on three. If you look at the composite. He's the number three interior offensive line and the number 71 prospect. But on three has him as the best interior offensive lineman in the country. And by the way, if Brad Davis is recruiting him and thinks he's good, if if Brian Kelly co-signs on an offensive lineman, you already know my feelings on this, I'm all on board. Because there, I'll say it again, there are two positions at which Brian Kelly has recruited and developed and pumped talent into the NFL greater than any other position on the field. It's tight end and offensive line, and he has continued, continued that conveyor belt of talent while at LSU. It has been a sight to behold the way that LSU has recruited offensive linemen. At at this point, you start to wonder, how high can this recruiting class climb? How high... Can this rating be? Remember, there's ranking and then there's rating. Ranking is where you are relative to the rest of the of the cl- the recruiting classes in that given year. The rating could look at any year. How many top tier prospects do you have that give you a class score, a rating? And this class rating right now is at ninety seven point oh one with eleven commitments for LSU in the class of 2025. You know they've got the number one prospect in the country in Bryce Underwood, who happens to be the number one quarterback as well, the number one receiver in the country in DeCorian Moore, the number one running back in the country in Harlem Berry, now the number one interior offensive lineman in the country as well with Tyler Miller picking the LSU Tigers. A couple of observations from uh, from this. Number one, and I'll say it every time LSU gets an offensive lineman to commit, This is like a Brad Davis appreciation moment. Brad Davis, before he came to LSU, was at Florida, then Missouri, then Arkansas. He was bouncing around the SEC, and he came home. And not only did he come home, he came home when things weren't great. When Ed Ogeron got fired, he was the interim head coach for the bowl game. He was the only member of the staff retained when Brian Kelly got hired. And listen to the quotes from Tyler Miller, the number one interior offensive lineman in the country who just committed to LSU, listen to the quotes as to why he picked LSU. He said, quote, Really, when I went up to LSU, the minute I went through the door, Brad Davis, Dr. Arnold, and others, they all felt like I was at home talking to people I've known for years. He went on to say, and I quote, I feel like I'm the closest to Coach Brad. That's a person I give a lot of respect to, and his hustle and his grind is amazing. My relationship with the coaching staff, his family, and their plan for me is having a good chance of making an impact as soon as I step on campus, but I have to work every day. Nothing's going to be given to me. Twice, he mentioned Brad Davis. Joe Sloan tweeted his appreciation on Sunday to Brad Davis. The bottom line is, 
Brad Davis not only is an amazing offensive line coach, as we have continued to see his ability to develop. And some of y'all, I don't need to name your names, and some of y'all may run to Twitter to go delete your posts, but some of y'all at the start of 2022 were crapping on Brad Davis. And I try to tell you, try to tell you, man, you didn't even have a center. You had, you had a, a guard playing center in the opener. You had two freshman offensive tackles. Some of y'all didn't like to hear it. By the end of that year, LSU had one of the best offensive lines in the SEC. Last year, they had one of the best offensive lines in the country, and they ain't slowing down. Look at what they have done. From Emory Jones and Will Campbell to Lance Hurd and DJ Chester. I know Lance Hurd's gone now. Cohen Eccles in this year's class, another five-star. Now you've got Miller and Harper committed for 2025, and they're not even relying on Louisiana. Chester's from Georgia. Eccles from Texas. Miller's from Mississippi. You're bound, I mean, you're staying in your footprint, your geographic footprint in the, in the Southeast, but you're getting great offensive linemen from all over. It's a Pied Piper effect. And once you show you can develop linemen and get them to the league and wait until next year when both Will Campbell and Emory Jones are first-round picks, how much easier still it's going to be to get great offensive linemen on board. Now, 2025 is going to be interesting because you're losing four starters. Campbell, Jones, Dellinger, Frazier are all going to be gone for 2025. So do the young offensive linemen on this year's team develop or do they dip into the portal? Another question for another day, and we'll have that question in another eight months from now. But, you know, maybe, well, maybe 10 months from now. But you, you'll get there. The bottom line is, I don't know that I've ever, as long as I've cheered for, loved, watched, covered LSU, I've felt this great about the offensive line and its continued ability to develop as I do right now with Brad Davis as that position coach and Brian Kelly as the head coach. It's kind of remarkable what they've been able to do. Now, I will tell you one thing. If you want to look at one other thing to the flip side of this signing class, or excuse me, of this uh, of this recruiting class, the commitments currently, yes, it is impressive. You are the top-ranked class in the country for 2025, and you've got an overall score of 97.01. And yes, you've got the number one quarterback in the country, the number one receiver in the country, the number one running back in the country, the number one interior offensive lineman in the country. What do all of those things that I just mentioned have in common? They're all offensive players. Of your 11 commits, eight of the 11 are offensive players. You've only got three defensive commits right now for the class of 2025. And you all watched the team a year ago like I did. The offense was awesome. Literally the best offense in the country. The defense stunk. You got to get better on defense. It's a long way to go between now and the December signing period. And yes, you can utilize the portal and all that sort of stuff. I get it. This class is amazing, what they're doing in 2025. And just with the in-state prospects for 2026... There's reason to think that's going to get fixed in a hurry. But it is worth noting, while you are uh, crushing it on the offensive side, and yes, you've got Jabari Antoine and Keelan Moses committed for 2025. Yes, you need more numbers and more depth on the defensive side as you round. Long way to go, but that's the other thing worth watching. And hopefully all the offensive talent continues to be a Pied Piper effect for the defensive side as well. But Number one interior offensive lineman in the country, Tyler Miller out of Mississippi State. Uh, he shuns Ole Miss and Mississippi State and is uh, committed to LSU for the class of 2025. Okay, it's after further review. We'll knock out a quick break. Um, Mark Zinno, our buddy uh, from 92.9 over in Atlanta, is going to join us next. Talk a little Falcons, NFC South as we're a week into free agency. Stay here. It's AFR. AFR. And I love telling you about Glow Resources. Glow Resources, my guy Jareth Nockhan and the, the staff over at Glow, they do amazing work. And what they do is they help businesses become more productive. And especially, especially since COVID, when finding and keeping qualified employees has never been more difficult, Glow Resources makes it easy. Baton Rouge, Houston, Miami, New Orleans, Orlando, Ridgeland, they've got offices all over. And they can help you no matter where your business is, anywhere in the country or placing employees at job sites all over the world. If it's skilled blue-collar workers or if you need white-collar hiring help, if it's management positions, 
Glow Resources can help. And they guarantee their work. If Glow Resources places an employee at your business and it doesn't work out within 60 days, they'll give you a prorated refund or find another employee for free. It's Glow Resources. GlowResources.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Bayou Ford has 7,500 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. 7,500 off plus 1.9% financing for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows, Doors, Siding. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. If you're just joining us, the uh, New Orleans Saints have agreed to terms with defensive end Chase Young. Rappaport had it first. Uh, with all of the, um, uh, the free agent signings, it is interesting to look at how this has affected um, some of the, uh, the the Vegas odds for next season. And quite honestly, unfortunately for the Saints, it's really hadn't done, done much at all. For example, um, uh, the Saints currently third best odds to win the division next year behind the Falcons, Bucks, uh, Falcons minus 150, the Bucks plus 325, and the Saints plus 425, and the Panthers a distant fourth at plus 1,200. So... Uh, how much will these free agent moves actually matter? I, I don't know. Let's uh, ask our buddy Mark Zeno over there at 92.9 The Game in Atlanta. Uh, ESPN Radio as well. Does a ton of uh, sports betting content. Great follow on Twitter at Mark Zeno. Y'all give him a follow. Zeno, great to see you last week in New York, man. How are you? Matt, you know, I got to tell your audience, in case they didn't notice, you, you're a thousand times better looking in person than I would have ever imagined. <laughs> you being good looking was at least plus 600 on the money line, and you just you just blew it away, man. That was a great win for you. Uh, you should see me when I had hair. 
Um, yeah, I don't, some, I know, I know. <laughs> some people like the bald head uh, beard look, but uh, I, I preferred my lettuce. It was it was good while it lasted. It just only lasted about 23 uh, years of my life. I know. I'll never be not jealous of dudes with good hair. I like, know. it's just one of those things. As somebody who doesn't have a lot of hair left, I just, you know, it's inherently there are certain things God gives and certain yeah. things God takes away, and he, the Lord took us, and he didn't decide to give any back. Yeah. But you got a magnificent jawline, Zeno, and good arms, too. This is a weird segment, yeah, how this has started. I'll tell you, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, well, listen, you know, I, I try to spice it up for a little bit for the New Orleans audience. Hey, speaking of uh, great jawlines, Kirk Cousins has a great jawline. He's the new quarterback yeah. for the Atlanta Falcons. I just shared the 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 uh, odd, the division odds, Falcons minus 150 favorites. Is that is is that right? Is that fair? Yeah. I mean, look, a lot of it based off the quarterback position alone. I mean, the Falcons have the best quarterback in the division by a plum mile. It's not even close. Like, there's an argument. The Falcons have maybe the second best quarterback in the NFC. Like, mm-hmm. think about it. After that, da- if Dak Prescott's one, I would probably put Dak at one. I think Dak's really good. You know, just as a court, let's not talk about wins and playoff wins. Stop because that's predicate this whole Kirk Cousins arguments by dumb Falcons fans. And I literally said this. I was on 9 this morning, and I literally told the audience, I said, I think the Falcons fans are the dumbest fans in the NFL because of their takes on Kirk Cousins. You know, the idea of, of we're not talking about playoff wins. We're talking about quarterback competency. So after Dak, I would put Kirk number two. Maybe it's a toss-up of Jalen Hurts. If you want to put Jalen Hurts ahead of him, okay. But at this point, he's better than Stafford. He's definitely better than Purdy. He's better than Jordan Love. Like, who else is out there that, that makes you think that they're better than Kirk Cousins. So if you have the second best quarterback or third best quarterback in the NFC, not only should you be the favorite to win the division, you should be one of the top two favorites to win the whole damn conference. You know how different is the conversation with Atlanta with Cousins today and the Saints with Derek Carr a year ago? Because it feels like they're total parallels. Well, you and I talked about this. Look, prior to last year with Derek Carr, I was not. I would not stand for any Derek Carr slander. Uh, Kirk Cousins and Derek Carson, I was not having any of it. I told people that, you know, those two guys are completely underrated. They're both really good quarterbacks, and they get a bum rep and a bum reputation for forever, a lot of reasons that aren't theirs. And then I saw Derek Carr in a Saints uniform, and I put more of that on Dennis Allen than anything else, but it's hard to defend him now after what happened last year. Like, there was literally no passing game. I mean, there were high school teams that had a better passing game in the state of Louisiana than what the Saints put together last year. And and, and that even with a bad even with a bad head coach who's a defensive coach, Still, the, the offense needs to be able to do something competent because of quarterback play, and they couldn't. Period. Like, Taysom Hill was more effective than Derek Carr was last year. So that's a big hit. Um, I, I think the track record is a little bit better for Kirk Cousins. Uh, I think that the system that Cousins has ran throughout his entire career is obviously more prolific when we talk about, you know, the tree. How, how annoying is that, by the way? Look at the coaching tree from Sean McVay and Kyle Shannon, the coaching tree. Um, but anyway, so uh, we're going to find out if Zach Robbins is the real deal, right? I mean, so... Uh, the new OC for the Falcons, who was mm-hmm. the you know the play caller in, in in LA, but yeah, I think there's a little bit more of a pedigree. Look, and you can't argue with 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns every year. Now Derek Carr was good, but he wasn't 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns on average every year when he was in he was the Raiders. So I think Kirk Cousins is a little bit of a step ahead of him. Um, you know, primetime games and playoff wins and wins to get playoff teams aside, stupid argument. Um, you know, th- th- this is a guy that really has, is prepared to take this team offensively to the next level. And the only thing that's really going to hold him back is if the injury bug pops up. Why uh, Why do you downplay the playoff record and performance? Because, I, I mean, listen, Peyton Manning, it took him nine years to win a Super Bowl. And he, and he got beat every single year in the playoffs by, by Tom Brady. Like, I don't understand. Like, and then he won one, and we stopped having that conversation. I downplay it because it's asinine. Mark Sanchez has four playoff road wins. <laughs> Did we sign him? Okay, Joe you Flacco. Win. You has, win. Joe That's Flacco it. has more <laughs> playoff wins than any free agent quarterback. Should we have signed him? What does that mean? Like, there is no predictability of who you're going to face in the playoffs, what the venue is, what the weather is. Like, you, there's no control over any of this. They're all random occurrences that nobody has any idea are going to happen until they do. And oh, by the way, Kirk Cousins in his last playoff game went for like 272 yards. Three touchdowns, no interceptions, and 145 quarterback rating, and then lost the game. So who's like? Did, did he play? Like we're, we're going to sit here and blame him because the, because the Giants scored more points on a bad Vikings defense that we knew was bad all year long. Like what are you doing here? Like yeah. I did, Joe Flacco, I covered him both while won a playoff game, going four for thirteen with no touchdowns and no interception, and the Ravens won the game. Like <laughs> it's, 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 
It is such a flawed, maniacal, bad argument that lazy fans make who don't want to use this thing called Google and just look at freaking stats and numbers. It drives me insane. Like, it's just, it's a lazy, it's lazy fandom. It's just, it's, there's no other word for it. Like, if you want to be, if you want to be a hot take artist, at least go get a fact. Like, at least go, go look up a stat to back it up. Like, you don't even do that much. Say, oh, I, I just saw the stat on ESPN. He's one in five in the playoffs. <laughs> stupid. I love getting you fired up. Um, Mark Zeno is with us, 92.9 The Game. Um, hey, by the way, you mentioned um, uh, that maybe Atlanta should be the second favorite in the entire NFC. Well, they're, they're sixth. Niners, Cowboys, Lions, Eagles, Packers, then the Falcons. Same odds as the Rams to win the NFC. Uh, what's your thoughts on that pecking order there? Niners, Cowboys, Lions, Eagles, Eagles yeah, Packers, Cowboys, then Lions. Falcons. I'm still going to tell you the Lions. I think they're overrated and overpriced from okay. a betting standpoint. Um, that doesn't mean I think they're bad. I just think they're overrated and overpriced from a betting standpoint. Okay. That's just that's a different conversation, just so we're clear. Um, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, you know, um, I, I think when you look at it, the, the lack of Falcons' past success plays into why they are where they are, right? Like, there's – you know, a lot of lines are set based off of previous success. You know, that's why you see long shots being long shots until they actually win something, right? Like, look at the Jaguars. The Jaguars, two years ago, were priced like a long shot. They win the division last year. They were one of the only minus money favorites to win their division, which was ludicrous. Because all of a sudden, they won a playoff game that they shouldn't have won against Brandon Moron Staley uh, <laughs> and, and the Chargers. So, like, you know, they got overpriced because of that. The Falcons have no history to speak of and so all you're doing is basing it off projections that their offense is going to be really really good um so that's why they are where they are right now but again i mean objectively like kirk is better than brock purdy kirk is better than jared goff right like i mean i mean, I mean i'm not uh, you know I me mean? i'm not a falcons fan per se i just live here in atlanta like i'm a giants fan so like uh, this isn't fanboy stuff here but objectively he's better than those two guys he's better than jordan love so if if you know, again, if he's not the second or third best quarterback in the conference, I don't know who is. But from that measure, you put yourself in the conversation from a betting standpoint. Look, and I said this today too. Here's the downside to the Falcons doing all the moves that they had, right? Like, there is literally zero excuse for Raheem Morris and Zach Robinson. Like, they, they, the minimum. If Arthur Blank, the owner of the Falcons, last year, and he told us this at the end of the year, after he decided to gutlessly fire Arthur Smith. I'm a big Arthur Smith guy. Um, but after he decided to fire him, you know, said, well, the player, the, the, making the playoffs were the standard. Like, this owner needs to come out right now and tell everybody, after the money he just spent in, in this offseason, the trades they just made, that 10 wins and a playoff berth or the division, you know, are the standard. Like, you, they can't win this division going 9-8 and eight because that means they could have lost the division. Sure. Because somebody's going to be right there with them. So, 10 wins is the bare minimum. Now, if somebody wins 12, they can't control that, right? They can only control they playing them twice, right? If they, if they win 12 and they lose twice to them, then, then there's an argument they could have controlled it in one 10 games, or one 12 games, rather. But So, they have to at least win 10 games and or the division. Um, last they, they, there's yeah, there's ahead, no wiggle room. There's no wiggle room there. If you don't, I'm not going to call the season a non-success. I will say they underperformed. Dynamically underperformed. Like, a home playoff game is not really a negotiable at this point. It better happen. You know, it feels just – I mean, this is like the same conversation we were having about the Saints a year ago when they signed – when they yeah. signed Carr. I mean, it's – it is cut cut and paste, the same conversation we're having here a year ago, and we, and we see how it went in New Orleans. So, real quick, the Saints haven't done much. Willie Gay, Nathan Peterman, Cedric Wilson, Stanley Morgan today, just a bit ago, they added Chase Young. Um, thoughts on, on what the Saints have done? I mean – if I was Saints fans, I'd just kind of like not watch the game and look at the score because it's going to be ugly. Like, there's going to be nothing aesthetically pleasing about watching this team. They're going to play a shit ton of defense. Like, they're going to play a whole lot of defense, you know? Like, they're going to play incredible defense all around, and that's going to keep them competitive in a lot of games. So, you know, I, I think for the most part, you know, this is a, a, a team that is going to be tough to beat, especially in their own building. But they've got to find some level of offense here, Maddie. Like they've got to find some level of of uh, ways to be able to put up points. Like it's one thing to not put up points. It's another thing not to put up points in winnable games or in clutch moments, right? Like you can score 19 points a game, but 
you know, if you score the twentieth when the other team only has eighteen or, or seventeen, your offense looks okay. Yeah, you know, I mean, fans are going to call and complain about it in sports radio, like because that's what, that's what they do, and that's understandable. But at the end of the day, you know, if you can win the games you're supposed to win, you know, uh, and look, the Saints still have the mental edge over the Falcons. They always will, right? <laughs> I mean, it's just mm. kind of the reality of the way it is. I, I, you know, I think Falcons fans to a certain extent understand that, and the rivalry is rich, and that's why because the Saints continue to, to, to figure out a way to kind of always beat them when the Falcons needed the most like they did last year, scoring 49 points or whatever it was and, and punctuating it in yep. with Jameis at the home. Yeah, you know, that was, that was, that so was fun good. for Atlanta, I think, but not really. Uh, so, you know, I mean, <laughs> they kind of have their number. And, and, and as far as Falcons fans should be concerned objectively, you still got to beat the Saints. You still got to go to the Saints home. If you don't, then then guess what? You know, you, you're going to be on the outside looking in again, and it's not going to be a it's, it's not going to be a, a good situation for Falcons fans. But on paper, they're a better team than the Saints right now. They just have to go out there and prove it. Hey, before you go, where's the value on the board with uh, with the big dance here in the, the opening weekend? I'll give you the plays that I've already locked in: Mississippi State money line, Drake minus one, BYU in the first half. These are all Thursday games. Lay the four. Four and a half makes me feel yucky. Um, you know <laughs> me about numbers, yeah, um, and, and what I tell you all the time. So, uh, but yeah, I, I would lay it with BYU in the first half as long as they hit their threes early on, they'll cover that number easily. So, uh, those are the three plays that I've got locked in right now for the Thursday games. Uh, and I will say this much: Kentucky's getting eliminated in the second round against uh, Texas, uh, Texas Tech or, or uh, NC State. Kentucky's oh. overseeded as a three seed, and Virginia does not belong in this tournament. I don't care what anybody says. Right. Virginia shouldn't get into this tournament with a ticket, <laughs> let alone playing on the court. <laughs> uh, he is Mark Zeno. Great gambling content as well. If you sports bet, follow him at Mark Zeno on Twitter. You're the best. Thanks, man. Thanks, Matty. See you. All right. We'll see you. So he, he already looked. Mississippi State money line, BYU first half. Did we say Drake, Drake minus four? Was that what the number was? He he said Mississippi State money line Drake and then BYU first half and then uh, Virginia doesn't belong in the tournament with a ticket. I'm using that one. Can you tell Zeno's a New Yorker? Yes. Does that just bleed through? It's so good. He and I had lunch on Thursday together. We found an Irish pub in somewhere in Midtown Manhattan. (laughs) It was like you just wind him up and just let him go, man. There was a guy who uh, I got. I got a break. I'll tell you that story in a second. It's AFR. AFR. Get Gordon. Get it done. Gordon McKernan, injury attorneys. You've been injured in an accident. It's not your fault. You know what to do. Get Gordon and get it done. Do it injured people in our state have done for more than 30 years. It's Gordon McKernan, injury attorneys. Uh, of course, the G team continues growing. Got to announce a few members of the Tiger baseball team uh, last week or in the past couple of weeks. And man, uh, Gordon just keeps doing great stuff. I love this too. Uh, Gordon uh, was reading at... Um, at Cedarcrest uh, Southmore Elementary for the Read Across America program. And it's one of the things I tell you all the time, man. Uh, so much of what Gordon does is giving back to the community, as he says, that's given so much to him. And this is a great thing for him to do, to go read to these school children. You see pictures on social media. He's a genuinely great guy who's made a, a business and a living on, on helping injured people in our state. So you know what to do. Go to getgordon.com. Get Gordon and get it done. Elevate brand visibility, ignite customer engagement with the power of radio and digital advertising combined. Guarantee Digital Media brings the two together as a trusted media partner in Louisiana for nearly a century. Claim your free digital audit at GuaranteeMedia.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. 
every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So... Retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing, and cheap. After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows, Doors, Siding. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. You know, winning and losing starts and ends on the mound. I did not think we pitched well. I think uh, there's a lot of things that are correctable that we need to go back and, and, and look at and do, which I think we, are, we already started doing that. And then defensively, we did not play our best. I think we have a good defensive team. I want to be very clear. I don't think we played great on defense. Offensively, there were a few bright spots. And what I told the team you know, last night is scoring 18 runs over the course of a weekend or averaging six a game, it's not enough to sweep in league. It's not enough to win all three games at all. I do think it's enough to win two out of three, you know, if, if the other elements are in order. Jay Johnson met with reporters on Monday. Disappointing weekend. There's no way around it. We opened the show today with some thoughts on that. And uh, look, it's it's three out of 30. You've got 27 to go. Like The positive thing for LSU is no matter if you get run ruled 15 to 5 or if you lose 2 to 1, they all count the same in the 30. So you've got a ton of runway to get this thing going in the right direction. But the next four weeks are brutal. So you better play a lot better than you did. He's right. For everyone talking about the offense, that's fine. But pitching and defense were supposed to pace this team. And they let you down. Now, one of the things I brought up is the outfield where you've just seen this uh, musical chairs with Bingham and left and center, Kling and center and the bench. We've seen Pearson and right and left. We saw Brady Neal in right field as well. Um, my feeling is, look, it, this should be set. It should be Bingham, Kling, and then Pearson slash Brown and right, however you want to want to make that work. But here was Jay Johnson on the rotation. A lot of them are the same across the board. A lot of them are the same. I think uh, Josh played well this weekend, and I would expect him to, you know, having the experience that, that he does. And there's some guys that provided some good things in the weekend, but we're just not where it's like, okay, this is what we're going to do. And, you know, and until I feel convicted about that, we, we won't. And I would love it, you know, if two guys said, hey, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm playing. That's probably a pretty good sign for how they're playing in our team. But I don't, I don't feel that way. And then you get into this dynamic that's super important is like you can't have them going out there playing for the next opportunity. They got to play for that opportunity. The really tough part is when you have it's, – it's a, it's a little bit of a, um, of a catch-22. The tough part is you have so many good players. Um. Because you're try you have all of these very talented players. And you're trying to get them reps. You're trying to get them experience. You're trying to get them at bats. You're trying to keep a lot of people happy. So you're playing a lot of people. Um, but that also makes things very unsettled. 
in the field and at the plate. So the the great news is you've got a lot of really talented players. The the tough part is you're still trying to figure out who goes where. It's got time to figure it out. It's a big weekend ahead with Florida coming in. But first, I mean Louisiana Tech's here tomorrow. And that's a really good veteran team. That's really going to challenge this LSU team. By the way, Javen Coleman going to start for LSU on uh, on Tuesday with uh with the Bulldogs coming in. All right, it's after further review. I do want to get to um some was out last week. I want to recap um you know my feelings on on the free agent signings for the Saints. Um we're brought to you by Pure Restoration, pure-restoration.com. As a matter of fact, I just got an email. Like literally this was at 4:02 p.m. um from I won't tell you the gentleman's name, but it, it, I if I'm lying, I'm dying. This is an email that came in for you. The first one was at 3.45 p.m. Then I replied, and he replied. He said, hey, Matt, can you send me the contact information for the company you always talk about with mold? Listen, if you can't remember the name Pure Restoration, that's okay. Just shoot me a note like this. his name's Ryan, like this gentleman did, and I'll gladly reply to you. I'll send you the, the link or who to call, all that sort of stuff. Pure-Restoration.com, pure-Restoration.com. If you have mold or mildew, odor, Pet odor, smoke, cigarette smoke, urine, whatever it may be, they can knock out odor as well. They can sanitize your building. It's pure restoration. It's a patented, non-toxic dry fog treatment. And yes, they are licensed by the state of Louisiana. Some other businesses trying to spread rumors out there. Know your facts. Pure restoration, licensed, bought, licensed mold remediation company in the state of Louisiana. Learn more at pure-restoration.com. Go read the full Army Corps of Engineers report, pure-restoration.com, pure-restoration.com. Okay, um, it's after further review. Muse, can you give me some football music if you got any over there? I was out last week. And uh, I missed getting the opportunity to talk about the Saints free agent signing. So if you're just joining us today... Chase Young, on a visit with the Saints, did agree to terms with the New Orleans Saints, who becomes the fifth notable free agent signing. Uh, let me run through quickly just my my bullet th- point thoughts on the four signings up until this point. Um, Willie Gay, love it. 26 years old. The Kansas City pipeline to New Orleans continues. Tano Passanio, Tyron Matthew, Colin Saunders, now Willie Gay. Uh, 26 years old. Um, Super Bowl champion, a guy, if you remember, from Mississippi, went to Mississippi State. LSU was in on Willie Gay. They thought they were getting him. And I don't know what Mississippi State offered in the final uh, end, you know, nth hour, but good for him. You needed a linebacker with Demario Davis, Pete Werner. You only had three linebackers on your roster, so adding Willie Gay is huge. And it's a one-year deal for a guy that's played in 47 career games. So I really like the Willie Gay signing, especially the contract. Do you have any type of little swoosh? Oh, okay, Muse. I brought us fastball today. All right. I was ready for it. Some anticipatory skills. But Muse, we got to have the fastball every day, not just one out of ten. You know what I mean? You can't, like, you can't be throwing uh, 86 mile an hour fastballs outside of the zone nine days out of ten. There's an LSU pitching staff joke to be made here, but I'm above that. Nathan Peterman. I wish it was Peterson, so I could play Ferris Bueller drop. Peterson! Uh, Rooney! You know where Nathan Peterman played last year? I do. Why don't you say it, Muse, so we uh, keep this thing rolling, damn it. The Bears. Played for the Bears. Uh, the Saints quarterback coach, Andrew Gianoco, came from... The Bears. So a little bit of a familiarity there. You got to like that. If he vouched for the guy, bringing him in is a good thing. This is a veteran arm to bring in in the quarterback competition. He's only played in 15 games in six years. Buffalo, Raiders, Bears. Um, it's a one-year deal, and I don't even think he's guaranteed to make this roster, y'all. He's going to come to camp as a veteran arm in camp who might make the team, or maybe he's just here to compete with Jake Hayner for the backup spot. And I'll remind you that Clint Kubiak came from San Francisco where you had another small-ish quarterback who was a great college player, was a late-round pick, who turned out pretty good in Brock Purdy. Maybe they view Purdy or Hainer as their Purdy. We'll see. But in the meantime, a veteran guy that you could bring in who might be a, a competent backup if needed. 
Cedric Wilson's a 28-year-old veteran wide receiver. You needed a receiver with Michael Thomas gone. Uh, 68 games played in his career with Dallas and Miami. Best season ever was in 2021. Caught 45 balls for 602 yards and six touchdowns. Those stats are... So, Cedric Wilson's best NFL season a couple of years ago are comparable numbers to what Rashid Shahid did last year. Now, they're very different receivers stylistically, but the point is you have a guy that could be a very competent number three for you if he can perform at that level. Um, so, another in a young receiver room, you had a veteran voice. I like it. And Stanley Morgan's probably not going to make the team, uh, but he's a St. Aug alum from New Orleans, played collegially in Nebraska, five years in the NFL, all with Cincinnati, two of those years. He never got on the field, play, you know, was on the practice squad. He's a camp body, could make the team on special teams, but a New Orleans guy, I do like it from that component, bring him in to compete in a pretty crowded young wide receiver room and see how that's all going to shake out. Okay, so those four, and then you add Chase Young on Monday, the Saints uh, busy in free agency. It is after further review. We'll knock out our final break here of hour number two when we come back. Muse will do a little Tigers and the Pros. David DeLucci in 15 minutes. LSU head basketball coach Matt McMahon, 45 minutes from right now. Don't you move. It's AFR. AFR. Got an email just a bit ago from my friend, Miss Teresa, over at Clegg's Nursery. And man, with spring having sprung, it's time to get on by and just plant something, y'all. I know it was a little rainy on Sunday, but the weather's pretty little cool, but we're not going to get to freezing. It's not anything like that. You always get that last little cold snap, but Clegg's has all the flowers, the plants and trees and shrubs that you need. They get new shipments of plants daily. Uh, Drew and I were at Clegg's on Segan Saturday. Uh, we had some friends coming over on Saturday evening, so I went and got our uh, mosquito barrier that they sell over at Clegg's and maybe a few little trinkets here and there they've got rose bushes they've got vegetable plants and fruit trees and it is time to weed and feed Clegg's has all of the products you need it's Clegg's nursery any of the four locations in the greater Baton Rouge area for more than 60 years they've been telling you to buy local and shop local and tell them at sent you to Clegg's nursery there it is the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. He's here. Anyone want a Coors Light? Oh, shoot, I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this. It was a human day. Barefoot children play. Looking for the summer shade. Time to slip away. Like cypress stumps, your roots are planted deep inside of me. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy-duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. 
I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Door Sighting. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. Wrapping up hour number two, David DeLucci talking some uh, SEC baseball in about 12 minutes from right now. Right now, Muso has Tigers in the Pro. Tigers in the Pros. They still bleed purple and gold. They're just really rich now. some uh, NFL free yes. agency news, the latest Let's. there. Saw a bunch of former Tigers sign uh, last week, but you have a couple more looking for their next destination. We'll start with Odell Beckham Jr. OBJ has not found his next destination, but he has officially closed the door with Baltimore, uh, posting an appre- uh, writing out and sending an appreciation post, I should say, uh, not only to the Ravens franchise, but to the fans. You know, uh, Did everything he could with the opportunities that he did. Uh Thank them for the vibes with a Z. Love that. There's a couple of expletives in there, too. But, mm. um, said he appreciated uh, the flock more than y'all could ever imagine. So Odell Beckham, definitely in search uh, of his next opportunity. The, is this real? That's not real. Okay, I was about to say, what, what uh, happened? It doesn't look real. You see what I'm looking at? I see what you're looking at. That doesn't look real. Okay. Uh, if it is... We'll come back to that. All effort. Okay. Uh, the Jets have been bandied about as a possible destination for OBJ. Uh, Tredavious White, in search of his next destination, Mike Garofolo from the NFL Network, uh, tweeted last night that Trey White had visits scheduled this week with both the Rams and the Las Vegas Raiders. So, of course, White was cut by the Bills in a cap-saving move uh, earlier this offseason on his way back from a torn Achilles. We'll see where he lands. We knew it was coming, but now it's official. The Pittsburgh Pirates have now reassigned Paul Skeens to minor league camp. So his time with spring training, uh, in the main roster up at spring training, is finished. He will go to minor league camp, and he's the number three prospect uh, in all of Major League Baseball. So, How long do you think it takes? Uh, I, Call I your think, shot. I think, uh, I think Call late, your shot! I was doing that. Late June, early July, I expect Paul Call Skeens up. Call your shot! Up. And you want an exact date? Yes. July 10th. July 9th. Okay. Can't go over. Yeah. That's $1. $1, one, one dollar I Bob. just $1'd you. Yeah, you did. $1. one dollar. I, what's worse, the $1 or the person who's like $1,300, dollars uh, That's strategy. I know, but I'm just like, come on, man. You couldn't think of a bid. Just luck of the so draw. You couldn't think no, of a bid. No, no that's no, what it no. is. You couldn't think of a bid, so trying you just... I'm trying to, I'm trying to get... Mm. Into the into the game. Yeah. You already got to come on down. That's what everybody really wants. No, you want to win. You want, you want a new car. You want to, or to car. play Plinko. Yeah. That's what Plinko, you want. Plinko, oh, yeah. Hole in one All or two. All the Price two. is Right vibes, and we got so Looch coming up here. In hey, yeah. How about that? Yeah, man. For those who don't know, David is married to Rachel Reynolds, who's a longtime Price is Right model. Uh, Cam Thomas, 12 of 23 last night for 31 points. That's great. Dropped a filthy and one, too, man. He does that a lot. His ability to get to the free throw line is incredible, as evidenced by his six for six last night. Five assists to round out his night. Good night for Cam. That's I watched Tigers that game last night. It was the only yeah. NBA game on late last night. I watched it. You got uh, the on N- NBA, Nets, uh, and, NBA Nets and Pels tomorrow night. Man. I'm excited about it. Pels are playing great. They are. Got to keep it rolling. Brought to you by Shabills Tire and Auto Service. Shabillstire.com. Uh, go see our friends over at Shabills. Of course, if you need tires, there's just nobody better. A couple things to remind you about. One is the Charlie's price match guarantee. It's part of the Charlie's dozen. Buy tires at Shaw Bills. Find them advertised cheaper within 30 days. They'll refund you 125% of the difference. 
That's Shabbos. They just guarantee you they're going to sell you the best tires for the cheapest price possible. Shabbos.com, Shabbos.com. But it's not just the price match guarantee. It's, it's the entire Charlie's dozen. It's a dozen benefits to you and every vehicle in your family when you purchase tires at Shabbos. So go to Shabbos.com and learn about uh, with the Charlie's dozen. It's free mounting, mounting and balancing. Uh, the free air pressure checks, the alignment checks every six months, the balancing for the life of the tires. It's the Charlie's Dozen, and it's only at Shaw Bills. Shaw Bills Tire and Auto Service. ShawBillsTire.com. ShawBillsTire.com. Shaw Bills, where we keep you rolling. Hey, remember, you can always text the show in the 225. 396-4400, 396-4400, 396-4400. Uh, I told you I was going to tell you the Zeno story real quick, and then I forgot. So uh, Mark Zeno, who was with us earlier this hour, Oh God! I have like thirty seconds. I was about to say this we, is not going to go. We well. go. We're at Barrett. We go to eat at a, at an Irish pub. I order a, uh, I ordered a, a chicken uh, wrap, something very light, mm. and I'd said keep the fries. I want a salad. There was some other patron at the bar down from us who wanted fries with a sandwich. Well, they switched our sides, so the bartender instead of taking it back and remaking it just took my plate and shoveled the fries onto his and scraped the salad onto mine. Uh, that's not a thing. <laughs> Zeno looked at him and, and used some very colorful language as only a native New Yorker would, and it was an amazing moment in my life. Hour number three coming up right after Sports Center. AFR. Bayou Ford has 7,500 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. 7,500 off plus 1.9% financing for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy-duty components provide you with unmatched reliability and performance. Skag, simply the best. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Oh, by the way, we do shutters too.
This is SportsCenter. I'm Christine Lisi. Breaking NFL news, defensive end Chase Young plans to sign a one-year, fully guaranteed $13 million deal with New Orleans, reports ESPN's Adam Schefter and Jeremy Fowler. The 49ers have forfeited their fifth-round pick in the 2025 draft and will have their fourth-round selection this year moved from number 131 to 135 because of administrative accounting errors. NBA Lakers big man Anthony Davis, corneal abrasion, questionable against the Hawks tonight. LA's percentage points back of ninth-place Golden State in the West. Both teams have dropped four of seven. Neither will have a long postseason run, predicts ESPN's Jay Williams. I don't know if their teams are properly built to help them go as far, right? Mm. Think about Steph. Think about, we're always going to talk about the Lakers, LeBron and AD. But the makeup of those teams, I think, don't compare to the likes of the top end of the Western Conference. Could they win a couple of games in the early playoff or the play-in tournament? Yes, but I don't see them being contenders at all. Baseball Yankees outfielder Aaron Judge expected on Wednesday to play in a spring training game for the first time in more than a week. He's been dealing with abdominal discomfort. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. At Progressive, they're making things even easier. They'll help you bundle your home and car insurance together so you can save on both. Learn more at Progressive.com or 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. <laughs> Live from, from the Mercedes-Benz Mercedes of Baton Rouge Studios. Let's Hour three, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR presented by Relief Windows. I'm Matt. You're a loser, Matt. Hey, shut up, kid. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Mm, you so. And Mr. Toby Tomplay. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Five o'clock quitting time. Glad you are driving home with us. LSU basketball coach Matt McMahon, bottom of this hour, 30 minutes from right now. Tigers against North Texas in the NIT Tuesday at the Maravich Center. Uh, the first thousand students free. Let me make sure I have this number right. Uh, I was texting with uh, the doctor, Kent Lowe, earlier today. Uh, first 1,500 LSU students free. A general admission tickets twenty dollars six p.m. tomorrow LSU North Texas in the NIT. So we'll get to Matt McMahon bottom of this hour. A first weekend of the Southeastern Conference baseball uh, slate is in the books. Let's recap it with our buddy David Delucci. Luch, how are you, man? Uh, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. What an awesome weekend. Not if you're an LSU baseball fan. <laughs> uh, well, let's as go a ahead whole, let's go as stamp a whole. that out right now, Luch. Uh, <laughs> that was a kick in the nether region. Um, uh, hey, uh, okay, where should the LSU panic meter be after this weekend? Uh, well, you would have to believe that they're going to hit a rough spot during the course of the season at some point, right? And they just – ran into a Mississippi State team that was absolutely unconscious at the plate. And we discussed this last week. It, it's a state team that's dramatically improved on the pitching mound. And even though they didn't have their Friday night ace, they still got great outing Friday. Uh, we saw you and I talked about the ambidextrous Durangelo Sanja. We saw how effective he is on Sunday. Um, just Hey, you knew they were going to pitch. Now, it's kind of surprising how they jumped all over Holman in game one and, and, and just their offense was relentless throughout the, the, the series. Um, this is the SEC, man. And every single one of these teams is stacked with top-tier talent. And occasionally you're going to run through a lineup that is hot. Let's not forget, it's one of the most intimidating atmospheres in the country when you play over there. And I think it was most noticeable when Griffin Herring was pitching in a tight situation. And it was deafening. The crowd was amazing. Um, so very tough atmosphere, a very hot Mississippi State team, and it's going to happen. It's Nobody needs to hit the panic button just yet. Um, so 
if we're not hitting the panic button on LSU, then the other side of that is, okay, well, you, you touched on it, but how much improved is Mississippi State for Team Lucha? was picked to finish dead last in the SEC West. Yeah, you know, pitching-wise, tremendously improved. Uh, Dakota Jordan is one of the nation's leading hitters. He, he's going to be in the run for golden spikes when the year's done. Hunter Hines, who's swinging the bat well, had a big series. Even David Mershon uh, hit really well. I mean, it, it's, it's a good team that's going to be competitive. I think early on, a lot of the reports that you had on them was that their offense was way behind their pitching staff. Now, all of a sudden, the offense is caught up with them, and you kind of see some potential there. Go up the, up the interstate a little bit. Ole Miss beating um, South Carolina two out of three. That was a team that was picked to finish last in the SEC West. Look what they're doing. So, um, man, it's crazy. Once you start conference play, you can forget about North Dakota State and Longwood University. This is totally different. Some teams elevate their play this time of year, and you find out a lot more about your own team. But once again, very few guys on that LSU team had to experience what they went through this past weekend. Tommy White was the only everyday starter and it's a big difference when those guys run out there in front of that type of crowd. I think it was one of the comments I made, Luge, when we started the show today, and I think you felt that. Uh, with one everyday starter returning, a lot of the guys just just looked like the environment swallowed them up. Uh, but they'll have more opportunities ahead in the SEC. Hey, um, David Delucci's with us. There were three teams uh, that, that swept over the weekend. Vandy swept Auburn, Arkansas swept Mizzou, Kentucky swept Georgia, Which of those was most notable for whatever reason? Man, um, I'm going to have to go with Kentucky Sweep in Georgia. And Georgia came into the series with their best start in in, in their modern era and an offense that was leading the country in home runs. And Charlie Condon was a guy that was about as red hot as you could get. And Kentucky just totally looked like what you thought Georgia was going to do to them. Kentucky, I think, hit eight home runs over the weekend and and slaughtered them. The team batting average is just under 400. Um, Once again, man, the SEC is is crazy. The ability for Kentucky, who was a team that relied on sacrifice spots and moving runners over and stealing bases to score big runs, and put a team like Georgia away has to show how competitive the SEC is. I just that one stood out to me. But look, all three of those. When I said it was an awesome weekend for Vanderbilt to sweep, as in just another offensive team that you don't think of that can hit the two-run home run that can beat you with the long ball. Game three of the 17 hits they had, 15 of them were singles. And they swept a very good Auburn team. So just an, an, an incredible uh, display of offense along with pitching throughout from top to bottom in the conference. David DeLucci is with us. Uh, we'll recap the SEC baseball weekend every Monday here with Luch. Uh, maybe the, not maybe, the marquee series of the weekend was a top 10 matchup with Florida against Texas A&M. And the Gators, who will be in Baton Rouge this weekend, uh, take two out of three from the Aggies. What was your big takeaway from uh, from Florida and Texas A&M, Luch? Uh, Florida's got question marks in the starting pitching. Uh, their Friday night ace, Cade Fisher, he did really well. Uh, Jack Caglione swinging the bat. Uh, just, I mean, he's just he's a terror at the plate. And he also pitched well in Game Three. That is a team that reminds you offensively of the LSU teams in the past. The fact that they are going to hit the ball out of the ballpark, and you just have to hang with them. Um, Brandon Neely, their closer, who is probably the, the, the go-to guy in the bullpen when the game's on the line, uh, there's some bicep issues with him. Curious to see if he's going to be able to tow the rubber against the Tigers this weekend. If he doesn't, that is a huge uh, impact uh, with the Florida bullpen. That means their starters are going to have to go longer. They've got a freshman going in game two and Liam Peterson that has been inconsistent throughout the year. So, if you miss that piece in the bullpen for Florida, I think LSU is going to have a great time hitting as the game gets deeper. Uh, he's David DeLucci. Hey, uh, before you run, Luch, what um, what would you say was uh, biggest takeaway from this past weekend? And then as you look ahead to week two of the SEC, 
I don't know if you've if you've really studied the slate for this weekend ahead yet, but what would be the the the, the series or the storyline uh, that that you're most looking forward to this coming week? Yeah. So the biggest takeaway for me, I'm glad you asked that question, is every single SEC team that went on the road lost their series. Mm. That just goes to show you how difficult it is to win in the SEC. Hostile environments, big crowds from top to bottom. It's very tough to win ball games away from home. I would say coming up, uh, the series I'm interested in, I'm looking forward to LSU, Florida, the Bama, Georgia series. Can Georgia rebound and can Alabama stay hot? Alabama beat a tremendous offensive club in Tennessee over the weekend, two out of three. It was a nail-biter at game three. Alabama's pitching staff has been great, but their offense has been even better. So I got my eye on Alabama. They are an up-and-coming team and playing really well. He's David DeLucci. Good enough to hang out with us on Mondays here, talk a little SEC baseball. Luch, we always appreciate it, man. Have a great week. We'll do it again next week. Yes, thanks for having me on. Take care. All right, man. Be well. It's after further review. Brought to you by the Williamson Eye Center. We appreciate Luch. Look, man, so many. So many former LSU baseball greats have had their LASIK, their eyes done over at the Williamson Eye Center. Warren Morris, our buddy Patrick Coogan. You walk into the Williamson Eye Center, they have this great uh, mural, this sort of wall dedicated to all the athletes that Dr. Blake Williamson has helped over the years. Devin White, Caleb on Chasson. I mean, the list is endless. Matt Moscona. All right, so I don't really belong in that list. But you understand my point is whether you're a schmo like me or an elite athlete, if you want to see 2020 without your contacts and glasses, the Williamson Eye Center can make that happen. Call 924-2020 to set up that consultation. Doesn't matter if you live outside of Baton Rouge. I mean, Dr. Blake will tell you, and I've been in there and seen him firsthand. There's so many, so many patients over the years that have come from not only outside of Baton Rouge, but from outside of Louisiana because the Williamson Eye Center is that elite. They're just the best. If you're going to have somebody operate on your eyes, if you're going to have an ophthalmologist perform one of these refractive surgeries, you want the best. And that's Dr. Blake Williamson at the Williamson Eye Center. 924-2020, 924-2020, or williamsoneye.com. Okay, it's after further review. Thrilled to have you here with us. On this uh, Monday, brought to you by Relief Windows, title sponsor of our Monday shows all throughout the year. Um, we'll do another little wraparound with the Saints. Um, a Saints cor- free agent cornerback is leaving. Uh, a offensive starter is taking a visit at an AFC squad today. And the Saints have just added another free agent while we were talking there in that last segment. A lot to get to in LSU basketball coach Matt McMahon in 18 minutes. Stick around. Say AFR. AFR. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. 
Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. It's the details that make the difference between good enough and simply the best. At Skag Power Equipment, the difference is in designing lawnmowers with your convenience and comfort in mind. At Skag, we believe that quality and substance matter and that you'll appreciate the attention to detail and craftsmanship we put into every single product. Thick steel and heavy duty components provide you with After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Door Siding. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. It has been a busy uh, free agent day for the New Orleans Saints. And uh, the, the headliner, if you're just joining us, haven't heard, uh, Chase Young has agreed to terms with the New Orleans Saints, former number two overall pick. Uh, we talked about that early in hour one as Chase Young was making his visit to, uh, to the Saints. And as we've now since learned... Apparently, his visit started last evening. Chase Young's uh, visit did with dinner with uh, Dennis Allen, uh, with Tyron Matthew as well. And um, it it apparently just continued on. This was courtesy of Jordan Schultz, who said, uh, Chase Young's recruiting pitch started at dinner last evening with Tyron Matthew, Dennis Allen, defensive coordinator Joe Woods, and defensive line coach Todd Grantham. Uh, clearly continued into today. And, of course, uh, Young now. Uh, has agreed to a deal with the New Orleans Saints. But uh, that's not all. The Saints have agreed to terms with another free agent. We got a little breaking news there, uh, Muse, if you would. What's uh, what's the latest? Looks like the uh, this is according to Ari Mayrob. Myrob. Myrob. Myrob, yeah. Uh, the Saints are expected to sign former Vikings guard slash tackle Oli Udo. One-year Udo. deal. Udo. Udo. Yeah. Oli Udo. Yeah. Yeah. Oli Udo. Big Oli Udo guy here. Big you fan. don't know who Oli Udo is. Uh, I am a big Oli Udo. At least I know how to pronounce his name. You mispronounce his name, Muse. Are we positive about that? Yes. I've known Oli for years. No, you years. haven't. I've been a big supporter. He, He's from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Okay. By the way, ask. Muse. Fayetteville, North Carolina. Went to Elon. Where's Elon? Not Musk. Elon. Yeah. Where? You know what? Actually, I don't. Is Elon Elon College or Elon University? It's Elon University. Okay. Um, Elon. They're the Phoenix, by the way. They are. It's a great mascot. It's kind of like the. It looks like a flame. It's a good one, man. It's kind of yeah, like it's... a little flame coming out of the thing. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. 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 They're in Elon. Where is that? North Carolina. You should know that Muse from baseball. Elon's been a uh, been a baseball it, because because they're in the region. You end up with a lot of midweek games and whatnot with Elon playing North Carolina. You know, the all South important Carolina. Game, well, yeah. they're not important midweek games. You should know that. But Oli Udo, Oli Udo is 
Uh, look, came into the league as a six-round pick back in 2019. Musa was so proud on that day when he heard his name called. Um, and he spent his career so far with the Vikings. Why do you have to do this? You you, and you just heard of him with everybody starts. else. He can play both guard and tackle. I uh, and, and by the way, by the way, something else you probably don't know about Ole Udo, which I know because I'm a big Ole Udo guy and have been for a long time. Ole Udo, he redshirted back in 2014 at, at Elon. At Elon. At Elon. Well, because look. As a member of the Phoenix. He redshirted. He didn't start playing football until late in his high school career. Started as a defensive lineman, then moved to the offensive side of the ball. And then, uh, so obviously teams were in late on him. Goes to Elon, red shirts, really started to develop, became a draft pick. Started, made 18 career starts there with the Vikings. Um, my guy Phil Mackey, over from from Score, uh, Score North, I, I presented with at, at Barrett Sports Media. Yeah. They're in the Twin Cities. We we had beers and talked about Ole Udo. No, you didn't. We did. Absolutely last week not. In New York. Why wouldn't we? Because Phil doesn't know who Ole Udo is. Oh, come on. All he right. covers yeah, the Vikings. All right, all right, all right, all right, we talked right. about him. We knew the Saints were in on Ole Udo, oh, so yeah. we talked about this. A little inside info. Never into... missed a game. How about that? At Elon. 45 starts on his college career. That's, ne- I mean, never that's missed good. a game. You, you, want, you want the durability. Been super yeah, durable. What do they stuff. say the best ability is, Muse? Availability. You got it. That's what they say. And that's what Ole is. Available. Now, with Ole Udo coming in, uh, this could mean, and I'm thrilled about that, by the way, big Ole Udo show. We have been here for a long time. Uh, this could mean the end of uh, Andres Pete in New Orleans. It likely does, as a matter of fact. So Ian Rappaport early on Monday tweeted that uh, Saints veteran free agent guard uh, Andres Pete, who started 102 games in New Orleans since 2015, is visiting the Titans today. Uh, Titans have already made a couple of offensive line additions, most notably former LSU Tiger Lloyd Cushenberry. By the way, random aside, tangentially if I could, whenever Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase sign their new contracts, the 2019 LSU Tigers will have exceeded a Billion dollars in contracts. The number, this was as of Tuesday. The number as of Tuesday. So it might have changed between you know, Queen, Patrick Queen got his deal. Anyway, the num- th- this was with Lloyd Cushenberry and Damian Lewis. So this was before, or, or um, no, this so that was after include- Patrick Queen. Okay. This includes, so after Patrick Queen's deal, Eight hundred nineteen million two hundred forty nine thousand four hundred ninety three dollars, the total contract NFL contract value from the twenty nineteen LSU football team. When Jets and Jamar get their deals, it'll go over a billion dollars. Then when Stingley gets his second contract, four years, a huh. billion dollars in four years. How are you doing? Greatest team ever. So, so Lloyd Cushenberry, I was there in Tennessee. Andres Pete uh, is taking a visit up there. I, I don't know. What's going to happen here with with Andres Pete? But I'll say this: um, I'm not going to argue that Andres Pete has been a great NFL player. He most certainly has not been a great NFL player. However, he has started 102 games and made three Pro Bowls. Now, there's an asterisk with the Pro Bowl because, like, everybody makes Pro Bowl now because nobody wants to play. And so, when you make it as an alternate, it's what it is. And he's never played a full season in the NFL as well. So he hasn't been super durable and reliable. But I think Andres Pete is a product of the expectation that comes along with being the 13th overall pick. You draft him 13, and he couldn't play tackle. Couldn't play on the left side, couldn't play on the right side. You had to move him to guard. You draft him at 13, and he became an average NFL starter at offensive guard. You drafted him at 13, and he never played a full season. He always battled nicks and injuries and bumps and bruises. You draft him at 13 and got to a point last year where he had to take a pay cut to stay in New Orleans. And the fact that this guy who started 102 games and has made three Pro Bowls has this soft of a market for his services speaks to the caliber of player that Andres Pete is. So I'm not telling you that Pete has been a great NFL player and you need to keep him by all means and all that stuff. But what I will say 
is this is a man who started 102 games in the NFL and has made three Pro Bowls. That makes him even still a very rare athlete in the world to make an NFL roster, start 100-plus games in the NFL, and have made three Pro Bowls. Not only that, but he's also a versatile guy who's played guard and tackle for you. And that, I would argue, has been the most valuable part of Andres Pete's contribution. While he's been your starting left guard, when you have had injuries at left tackle, he has kicked out and played left tackle like he did last year. Your Trevor Penning experience went kaboom, and when Hurst got hurt, it was Pete who kicked out and played left tackle. So, I'm not, and I'm not telling you he's an all-pro left tackle, but at least he was able to play it for you at a at a starting caliber level. Also, despite all of his injuries and all the stuff, he's the anti Mike Thomas. He's been a good teammate. Like when in when in nine years have you heard anything about about Andres Pete ever being a bad teammate, ever? So to that extent, I tip my cap, man. Um, I I don't think, especially with the Ole Udo signing, it seems as though Pete's days in New Orleans are are done. They're going with a younger guy who's been a who could play inside outside, a swing guy. He's basically a younger version of Pete. So it's likely they're not going to bring Andres Pete back. Yeah, but if they did, it would be affordable. And maybe that door is not closed, depending on what the market looks like. Maybe hey, you want to come to camp, try to earn a rush spot? Come on. But because of his experience, his versatility, his being a good locker room, but good teammate, I, I wouldn't hate bringing back Andres Pete at the right price. And it's a key part of this whole conversation. It's a guy who was willing to take a pay cut a year ago to stay in New Orleans. So at the right price, not a terrible option. But with signing Ole Udo, it certainly feels like Andres Pete stays in New Orleans as a Saint are are done. But as that develops, we'll continue to follow it. Okay. Uh, it's after further review. We're brought to you by First South Farm Credit. If you're looking to buy land, your first call, your first call should be to First South Farm Credit. You can look them up online at firstsouthland.com. Firstsouthland.com. Remember, if it's land for recreation, you want that hunting property, you're tired of sharing your lease and you want your own place, firstsouthland.com. Maybe you want to buy 20 acres to build your dream home that'll be in your family for generations. Firstsouthland.com. You need 1,000 acres for agriculture. You need to finance your farm equipment. Firstsouthland.com. They've been doing it in Louisiana for more than 100 years. Since 1916, it's First South Farm Credit, your first option. When it comes to buying land, it's First South Farm Credit because that's what they do. They help you finance land. First South Farm Credit. FirstSouthLand.com. All right, y'all. It's after further review. Oh, we found out on Sunday that both the LSU women and men's basketball teams are going to play on. Uh, the women are a three seed. They'll host Rice in the opening uh, round of the NCAA tournament later this week. And the LSU men's basketball team did, in fact, earn an NIT bid. So in year two under Matt McMahon, the Tigers will play on. When we come back, the head man of the LSU basketball program will join us. Matt McMahon is next on AFR. AFR. Brought to you by Rouse's, the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. Y'all, it is crawfish season, and I was so fired up to learn. As much of a challenging crawfish season as this has been, the prices of both live and boiled crawfish over at Rouse's are starting to drop, which is awesome to see. Um, you're even kind of creeping below $5 this past weekend, $5 a pound boiled, which is incredible considering what we've seen so far in this season. Go to Rouse's, of course, uh, the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. Rouse's has all of your boiled seafood. So if you're looking for boiled shrimp or boiled crawfish, Rouse's has you covered. Um, and the great thing is with their hot and boiled kiosks, they've got it bagged and tagged. If it's boiled shrimp, boiled crawfish, uh, corn and potatoes, they've already got it for you over at Rouse's. The official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints, Rouse's. This feels like home. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients, uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. 
What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Gulf Coast Bank & Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a... After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Door Sighting. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. What a job uh, by Matt McMahon and his staff. Year two after inheriting a program that had literally zero scholarship players two weeks after being hired. Now in year two, uh, they punched their ticket to the postseason. LSU will be in the NIT against North Texas. Tuesday, 6 o'clock at the Maravich Center. Matt McMahon, good enough to spend a couple of minutes with us here. Matt, thanks for the time. How are you? Matt, doing great. Excited to uh, still be playing here in late March and hoping we can take advantage of this opportunity. Trying to get some people into PMAC tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, uh, the first 1,500 students. It's free. Uh, tickets are 20 bucks a piece. General admission. Uh, hopefully create a really good environment. But let me start with a big picture one. I know I've heard you speak on this, but let me just ask you now that the, that the bid is out. We know where, what it's going to be. What does it mean for your program to, to make it into postseason here in year two? I think it is incredibly important for us, Matt. Um, I've said it, and I'll be very consistent in my message. I didn't want to come to LSU to participate in the NIT. That certainly is not the goal. Uh, but where we were 23 months ago in April of 2022, uh, from a roster and a program standpoint, um, to be in a position where we won nine SEC games, uh, we finished in the top half of the standings, uh, and now get to continue in the postseason, I think it's an important step for us and something we really need to build on as, as we look to establish the foundation of the program. Was this a realistic expectation for you at the start of the season? Uh, when I think back to some of those games in November, December, no. No, I didn't <laughs> see us playing much postseason ball. Um, back then, uh, but really great credit to our players. 
lot of adversity throughout the season. It certainly wasn't a smooth journey. Uh, but the way we were able to finish 5-2 and two in those last seven SEC games, uh, the three consecutive one-point wins, uh, really put us in a position to get to do this, and our players uh, deserve a lot of credit for it. I mean, it started with that win at South Carolina, uh, down 16 in the second half on the road, and then, you know, it's obviously the, the incredible finish here at home against Kentucky. So uh, I'm excited about the progress that's been made throughout the season. Ultimately, as a coach, you know, especially at a place like LSU, you want to be in the NCAA tournament and advancing yeah. multiple rounds. But the ultimate goal in coaching is to, to see your players and your team be consistently getting better. And I think we've been able to do that over the last couple months. Matt McMahon is our guest. Um, some teams, uh, notably, choose not to accept NIT bids. What is the benefit for this team and your program of playing in the NIT? Well, I, I think programs are all in different different places. Uh, but for us, it's get to keep playing. I think that's how you get better. I mean, we've had two really good practices yesterday and today instead of you know, putting the uniforms away and calling it a year. You, know, you get continued time with your players, player development program, building those relationships, and the opportunity to compete. I mean, I just can't imagine not wanting to play. Um, this is not college football where, you know, I think 86 of the 134 teams get to play in a bowl game. You know, this is 100 out of 362 teams. So about a quarter of the teams get to keep playing. And uh, I'm excited we're one of them. What do we know about this North Texas team? Kind of unique. I really wasn't expecting to see them pop up yesterday, considering we had already played them uh, in the tournament in Charleston, uh, what seems like about 10 years ago. Yeah. But uh, really, a they're a top 40 defensive team in the country. They're really physical on that end of the floor. Uh, they shoot it well from three. 14th in the country in three-point percentage. Uh, really good offensive rebounding team, top 40 in the country there. And they force a lot of turnovers, which if you've watched us play any match, sometimes we struggle in that area. Yep. So ball security uh, will be very important for us tomorrow. It, it was it was the fourth game of the season. It was after the Nichols and Dayton game that you played. And obviously before you had Jalen Cook eligible, well, you had Jalen Cook, and now he's not eligible. So how different is your team today than the one that played North Texas back in November? Yeah, looking back on that game uh, late last night, uh, Mike Williams was our point guard at the time. Uh, Trey Hannibal had not taken the leap that he's taken here over the last couple of months. So his role was different on that team. Uh, we were different schematically on the defensive end, and we had to make some changes there uh, to make up for some deficiencies. Uh, but, but I think we're a, a much, much better team than we were in that game. Unfortunately, so are they. Uh, I think they've gotten better as the season went on as well. Uh, but it'll be a great test for us. Uh, we, we really want to try and control the tempo. They play incredibly slow, uh, long, deep, long possessions. Uh, so we'd love to be able to get some stops and, and get the pace of the game going up tempo tomorrow. Just a couple more for you, Matt McMahon, is our guest. Um, obviously, with the, the early exit from the SEC tournament, it gives you some time, I would presume, to rest, maybe to practice. What what has the schedule been like from when you left Nashville to, to now? Yeah, well, we did. We took Friday and Saturday off. Uh, we knew, especially with the run Mississippi State and A&M went on, that they'd make the NCAA tournament and we'd be uh, you know, the first automatic qualifier for the NIT and get the host. So we came back in Sunday afternoon and really just got up and down and competed. And, um, you know, we'll see how it plays out tomorrow. But we had a good practice yesterday and Monday, but the thing that stood out to me that was a big step forward from a program standpoint, is over half the team was in the gym Saturday morning working out uh, to get ready for the tournament. And sometimes, as you've seen some of these teams that bailed on the NIT, uh, some teams are ready to put the uniforms away. Our guys have worked extremely hard this weekend in preparation for tomorrow night. And I think have 
great appreciation for the opportunity. That's a great point. Who who wants to be there? The motivation matters. Do you look at last thing? Do you look at all at the Seton Hall St. Joseph's matchup that it could present if if you were to beat North Texas? Yeah, I think so. The 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 big thing for us, they don't play till Wednesday. Uh so you know, I think our players have done a good job. Just stay focused, obviously. If we don't win tomorrow, I don't. I don't give a damn who wins the Seton Hall St. <laughs> right. Joe's game because we'll be done anyway. But I think I think if we're able to win that, we know with the uh, the seating and also Coach Mulkey and and the women's program getting to host this weekend that we would be on the road. So uh, two really good teams, but we need to just keep a laser focus here on finding a way to beat North Texas. Matt McMahon, uh, LSU against North Texas, 6 p.m. Tuesday at the Maravich Center, first round of the NIT. General admission tickets are 20 bucks. The first 1,500 students get in free. I'll get free pizza, too, anything like that, Coach? Do we know that yet? I'm looking at the notes. I, I hope so. I'll throw, I'll throw in the pizza, and if we have more than 1,500, we'll cover all the student tickets as well. So hopefully we'll have a good atmosphere in there and, and uh, you know, fun to still be playing here late in March. Always appreciate the time and the access. Thanks so much. Good luck tomorrow. All right, Matt. Thanks for getting the word out. We appreciate it. Of course. That is uh, LSU basketball coach Matt McMahon. Uh, I think he said it right. When he came to LSU, he didn't come here with the ambition of making the NIT. But I say this often, and I, I know it's cliche, and some of you might get sick of hearing me say it, context matters. In, in the in the grand scheme, or I should say you know, in a silo, in a vacuum, a you know, an LSU basketball program going 500 in the league, 17 and 15 overall, and going to the NIT is not a success. However, in 23 months going from zero scholarship players, the threat of sanctions and postseason bans and scholarship reductions, and all different types of things that could have been, and winning nine games after going 2-16 and 16 in the conference to going 9-9 nine and nine and having some really nice wins, even earlier this year when you lose at home to Nichols. I mean, no disrespect to Nichols. God bless. I mean, I, I cheer for all the state schools, but <laughs> you can't lose at home to Nichols, man. Um and you've gotten it together the way they are, I think gives so many people confidence that, yeah, you got the right guy for the job. You got a guy that, that wants to be here, wants to work, wants to recruit, and he can certainly is a heck of a coach and is going to build it, and he's on his way. And this is another step. So, look, next year, next year I think the expectation fairly is going to be you hear your name called on Selection Sunday. Year three, you took a step. You've got portal, and IL recruiting. You've got stability now. Build on it and and hear your name called on Selection Sunday for the big dance next year. That's next year. In the meantime, um, you know, certainly appreciate not only Matt McMahon, but the job that the players have done to get themselves to this point. So LSU uh, in the NIT against North Texas. Women will play Rice at the Maravich Center on Friday. And uh, you know, we'll look forward from there. They got a heck of a draw, you know, a potential um, matchup ahead with Iowa on their side of the bracket as well. So... We'll, we'll talk more about that as we go later into the week. But um, madness is beginning. All right, y'all. We're brought to you by Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. LMFJ.com. LMFJ.com for Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. If you're thinking of popping the question, gents, do what Louisianians have done for decades. Nearly four decades now. Lee Michaels has been helping people in our state get engaged. Two locations in Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Lafayette, Shreveport. Ten in all. And because they buy diamonds for so many locations and buy in bulk, they can give you the best deal. But not only that, not only can they give you the best price and the best quality diamond, at Lee Michaels, they always give you the Lee Michaels experience. When you walk in, you're offered a, a cold beverage, chocolates on a tray. It's the whole experience of understanding what you're doing is very important, and you should feel like what you're doing is special when you buy a diamond. That's what Lee Michaels can help you do. Thrill her with a gift. In the red box from Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. LMFJ.com. LMFJ.com for Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Okay, y'all. Been a great show, man. Appreciate you for being here with us. Um, been a newsy day around the Saints. Chase Young has agreed to terms with the Saints. Oli Udo, an offensive lineman, uh, formerly of the Vikings, now also agreeing to terms 
with the New Orleans Saints. Talked plenty of baseball. David DeLucci was here. Uh, Mark Zinno uh, from uh, 92.9 in Atlanta was good enough to talk some NFC South with us. So we covered a lot of ground. Uh, LSU football lands the number one interior offensive lineman in the country for the class of 2025. So much meat on the bone today. It's great to be back and have such a uh, content-heavy day. So if you missed anything, you can always catch it on demand. And of course, as we always say, uh, book your tee time at golf.breck.org. Golf.breck.org. Of course, championship courses with Santa Maria and Beaver Creek. Check it out. If it's a web or Dumas, check them out. Golf.breck.org. Um, okay. City Park, of course, is a beautiful, a beautiful park over there by LSU. All right. Uh, let me not get a break. We'll come back, wrap up the show. Uh, Otter will be here. No college basketball games today. That's got to be an odd feeling. For the first time in months, Jimmy won't be betting on a college basketball game. So, uh, with no games on the slate tonight, what we're going to do is uh, look at the bracket. Jimmy will give us some uh, some games that he may, maybe likes. When Zeno was here last hour, he gave you some of the, the games he's already played. I'll go over those again if you want to get in on that early. So, uh, and even if you have a question about the bracket or a, a, a betting type question you want to fire away, you can do it. Get it in. You can email us, tweet us, text us in the two two five at three nine six forty four hundred three nine six forty four hundred three nine six four four zero zero. Okay, y'all, uh, we'll knock out our final break and wrap up next. Stay far. AFR. Brought to you by the Watermark Hotel and the Renaissance Hotel, Watermark Downtown, Renaissance South Town. Always great events going on. I tell you all the time, by the way, if you want to host, if you're thinking of hosting or planning another a, a, an event coming up, the Watermark or the Renaissance, they're in the business of saying yes, so they can host your next event. You know, you know dozen people up to 500 people They've got the space and the capabilities to host you at either the Watermark Downtown or the Renaissance Southtown. Love telling you about evenings at the Renaissance. Great series of events that they're doing at the Renaissance inside Tallulah. Mark your calendar for April the 12th. Uh, this is really cool. Discover the art of mixology with Sugarfield Spirits. It's an evening of crafted flavors. You can take taste unique spirits and exclusive cocktails. It's evenings at the Renaissance, April the 12th, 6 to 8.30 p.m. right there at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. So if you're looking for something different to do around town, check out the Renaissance Hotel. It's the Watermark and the Renaissance. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. It was a humid day. Barefoot children play, looking for the summer shade. Time to slip away. Oh, Louisiana, some kind of hold on me. Like cypress stumps, your roots are planted deep inside of me. Oh, Louisiana. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So 
retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows, Doors, Siding. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. Down the stretch, we come final segment here on a Monday edition of AFR. We always appreciate Brandon Holly and the gang over at Relief Windows. Of course, uh, I mean, they have some, they offer a wood window line that comes with a lifetime warranty. It's crazy. Say that slowly. There's some HOAs that require wood windows. Relief Windows has wood windows that come with a lifetime warranty. (laughs) It's incredible. Uh, It's Relief Windows. They're just the best. Relief Windows and reliefwindows.com. Okay, down the stretch we come. Final segment. Uh, One thing left to do. Let's find out. Well, not what we're betting on tonight, but maybe this week with the NCAA tournament around the bend. Time for Otter Locks. Otter Locks, presented by Lofton Staffing Services. At Lofton, we put people to work. Call us today at 924-0200 or go to lofton.jobs. So we turn to the one and only, the incomparable and often incomprehensible, the Ott father himself, uh, Jimmy Ott. <laughs> We've got Matt McMahon on the screen. That's not Jimmy Ott. Uh, Jimmy, how, Otter, how are you? Oh, getting a lot of yard work done today, man. I mean, it's amazing how productive you could be around the house when they're not watching guys dribble a basketball all night. So, well, uh, <laughs> we appreciate the yeoman's work all season long. No, get no college games today. So, yeah. um, as we look ahead to the play-in and or the first round, I guess as they well, call I, it. I, I could tell you what with Matt. I don't know, but the thing I want to go over is yeah. the line movements right now. We know about the five, twelve, and we had Johnny Avella uh, on the show today, and you know that's when they let the the mobile industry was really playing for Keats when they got him off the Las Vegas Strip. He's the uh, sport, sportsbook operations manager for DraftKings, and the five, twelve all had significant movement. San Diego State game not much, but all on the underdog. So the underdogs were all bet. That's the biggest thing about this. This first two days of the tournament, way higher percentage of the handle is on the underdogs. People bet what they want to cheer for. You ever been in a sports book, man? That underdog's mm-hmm. got a chance. They are all fired up. So here's some uh, interesting line movement. Also, um, Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky is going from, uh, I'm sorry, Kansas. Kansas is going from eight and a half to seven and a half. So they were one and done in their tournament uh, after when they were sitting there, two guys. Tennessee, one and done in theirs, mm. but that line is going from 18.5 to 21.5 against uh, St. Peter's. Uh, Dayton was 1.5. Now Nevada is a one-point favorite. Two-and-a-half point swing over the uh, picket there. And Illinois has gone from 13.5 down to 11.5 against Moorhead State. So these lines are popping around mm. pretty good right now. Mississippi State went from 6.5 to 6 last night. It's back at 6.5 right now at DraftKings. You see, uh, like, how what would be a, a strategy, Otter, with with so many games, and 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 like you just mentioned, also like chaos and not knowing matchups and line movement. Like, how should someone approach betting the tournament? Well, I mean, whenever I'm in doubt, I just take the underdog. I mean, it, um, I still like to check the percentages, but there's still enough uh, against the the brand name teams too. And so that's kind of a carryover, and you're seeing that already, like the action on Stanford uh, against Kansas. Um, you know, Kansas is not nearly as good as they normally are. Uh, you know, a Gonzaga. You know, McNeese State catches. You know, I think McNeese State is a little underseeded, and Gonzaga's overseeded. Gonzaga and St. Mary's shouldn't be the same seed. St. Mary's won the regular season title. They won the tournament. They won two out of three. They should be seeded higher. And then the craziest is, I mean, does the NET count at all? Auburn with the top five in the SEC tournament, and they're four, a four seed in the top against the favorite to win the whole thing in UConn. So, um, I you know it's it, it's tough, Matt, because you know the I, I still go against the brand team. I'm 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 not 
I'm a little curious on these teams. That one minute remaining. Center, because I know one thing we, we've learned from championship week. This is like a, a handicap in some of the minor bowls. The teams that had their seating set were kind of sitting people. Kansas sat two guys. Houston pulled their guys at basically at halftime or mm-hmm. early in the second half of their uh, of their tournament final. And you had other teams that just lacked a little bit of the focus and intensity where they just dominated in these matchups during the regular season. So it's uh, it, and, the, and the, the committee gives these, – these seeds are done before they start playing on Thursday for most of them. Yeah. Otter, y'all are uh, at the bow? Uh, Mike Anderson's tomorrow, then Beau Ravage, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. Okay. Always great shows over there for uh, March Madness. We'll look forward to it. Thank you, Otter. Yep, and handicappers every day starting tomorrow. Y'all make sure you catch Jimmy and Charlie uh, every weekday from 11 to 1. All right, it'll do it for us here on this Monday. Muse Pauly, I appreciate you. See you tomorrow at 3. AFR. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us.